It's time for Mac Break Weekly. I'm back from vacation. I'm so excited. I hear that uh, Apple made some announcements. Okay, I apologize, but I'm Leo Rip Van Winkle here. I'm going to ask Andy and Renee to explain what it all means. And yes, we have the new iPad Pro. We have lots to talk about. A big Mac Break Weekly is next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for MacBreak Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is MacBreak Weekly, episode 564, recorded Tuesday, June 20th, 2017. Leakers gonna leak. MacBreak Weekly is brought to you by Tracker, a coin sized tracking device that pairs with your smartphone and keeps you from losing your most valued possessions. Visit thetracker.com and enter promo code MACBREAK to save 20% off any order. And by Upside, the real deal for saving money and getting a big gift card for every business trip you buy. Visit Upside.com and enter the code MACBREAK to be guaranteed at least a $100 gift card when you book your first trip. Minimum purchase required. See site for complete details. And by WordPress. WordPress powers 28% of all the websites in the world. Get 15% off your new website at wordpress.com slash macbreak. That's wordpress.com slash macbreak. It's time for Macbreak Weekly, the show where we cover the latest news from Apple. Yes, I'm back. Thanks to uh, Annie Anako and Jason Snell for filling in while I've been on vacation. And look, lo and behold, they came back anyway. Well, Andy did anyway. Andy Anako, Chicago Sun-Times, CWOB.com. Hello, sir. I just wanted to see your new tattoo. Uh, I got a uh, uh, well. I, they told me it was a whale, but now I'm I'm looking at it. And I don't think I don't know what it is. But uh, well, I realize, but by, by, by the time you have the three mirrors, you can actually see it with your own eyes. It's going to be reversed a couple times. Oh, so. Okay, maybe that's the problem. He's swimming right to left, not left to right. Also, <laughs> Renee Richie's here from Mac from iMore.com and Mac Break Weekly. Hi, Renee. Hi, Leo. It's great to have you back. It's not the same without you. So, anything happened while I was gone? Nope. No, nope, quite <laughs> two weeks. Andy and I went camping. Man, that ukulele was good. I couldn't watch the uh, Apple event because I was on a plane. But, of course, as soon as we landed, I ordered an iPad Pro. <laughs> <laughs> um, this was there the one. Get it. As far as we know, this is exactly what uh, the rumors said uh, six months ago, right? The 10.5-inch. 10, 10 yep. Um, but I've been reading your uh, reviews of it, Renee. I mean, you're singing its praises. My favorite iPad just got even better. Uh, that's it's, Serenity, but uh, yeah, I think, both you, I think you concur, right? Uh, it's phenomenal, and not for reasons I thought. Like There was a lot of stuff that leaked about it, but ProMotion didn't really get a lot of attention before the leak. And when you see it in person, especially like some people won't notice it. You know, Some people don't notice the differences. I don't notice differences in sound, uh, but I do notice differences in visuals. And once you see a, a adaptive 120 hertz uh, on a real display and you see text that you can read while it's flicking and you see a movie at 24 frames per second while you're drawing at 120 uh, hertz on the other side, it, it's really hard to go back, even to a previous iPad Pro. You would Okay, so it doesn't always do it. It scales uh, the frame rate up and down. It can go as fast as 120 uh, cycles per second, which is yes, so four to two to four it. times faster than the normal monitor. Most monitors are 30, TVs 30, many computer monitors are 60 frames per second, 120 yeah. frames per second. And it is that only for on the, the pencil? One. No, so if it was 60 frames per second on the previous generation 9.7 inch iPad Pro, and it would down, it would it would go down if it needed to to save uh, power. On the new one, it can also go up. So the minute the pencil touches the screen, it automatically goes to 120 hertz, and then we'll play back lower frames per second video using math. Like it'll just do with five frames, you know, if it wants to hold wow. at 24 frames per second. Uh, but also, apps can ask for the higher refresh rate if they think they need it and then it has like a little dispatcher in ios that goes okay you can have it now this is how we're going to match this panel to that panel this is what we're going to do for your video so we're going to do for the pencil and it sort of works all that stuff out for you that it sounds fairly sophisticated i don't know of any device that does anything like that it's the, it's what they said is a complete hardware software silicon solution yeah. which is what they're which only apple at. can do really i mean uh, well, I guess Microsoft could do it. You could have Microsoft a Samsung hardware. version where yeah. it's in certain Samsung apps and you have to have the yeah. user choose the profile right. you want when you exactly. go into the app. Right. So um, I didn't notice that. I did notice better sound. Is there better sound? Because it seems like it's much more stereo than it was before. It sounds really good. The company line is that it is the same great speaker system as the previous one, but many people do say it sounds better. I'm not very good at music, so I have to defer to people like you who have better, better uh, acoustical Not talent. with the headphones, but I feel like the sound... 
is more extremely stereo and i mean i just it's, it's slightly noticeable. bigger and it is a big echo cavern so who knows yeah maybe uh that's the thing of course you'll immediately notice is that uh so it isn't the same exact physical size as a 9.7 i had to get a new smart keyboard it's although slightly bigger yeah. you can use the old smart keyboard it just sticks out a little bit yeah uh and you'll lose the full sizedness and then yeah and i i actually you know i I've, i really think well we'll talk about this in a second so anyway the bezel on the top and the bottom is shrunk yeah. And is are there the sides? Yeah, they're a little smaller too, aren't they? Yep. Yeah. The whole thing, they wanted to put as big a screen as they could in as small a package as they could. So it's about 20% bigger screen, but only a few percentage point bigger physical device. Yeah. yeah. And they really haven't they really haven't tr uh, traded off the convenience of it. Uh, if you're afraid that the smaller bezel can, is going to mean that you can't really hold it lazily while you're reading a comic book or watching TV or something it, without accidentally hitting the screen, Maybe you will hit the screen, but it's smart enough to realize that no, 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 he's just holding the screen. So uh, I, I, I've only been using it for a couple of days, but I've it's nothing but up so far. Yeah, um, and it's fast. It's the 10x processor. It's so fast, Leo. <laughs> now, again, I think this is one of those things that, uh, for two reasons, you might not notice. One, because benchmarks show speed, but in real use, that those that you know, uh, whatever twenty percent increase doesn't necessarily translate to what something you'd notice. Us? is uh, Serenity was in Procreate and she was saving. I just assumed she was saving out JPEGs and she said, no, I'm saving the movie files. Yeah, that's where you I notice. I to look again. Is there certain things that seem to be faster? That's where you really notice, Where if you've been using one. Uh, but for, for most, the most part, programs are, are going to operate the same because they're not, they're not, they weren't taxing the old processor. And the bigger one is a little bit smoother. Like the bigger one, you'd, you'd press the home button, for example, and you'd see the icon sort of immediately go down where this one, you can actually see like the smoothness of them animating through just because it, it can push around those pick those many more yeah. pixels much more easily. Well, and the higher frame rate, I would imagine. Right. Yeah. Um, what is a little disappointing is that Apple, every time they increase the size of the screen and the number of pixels of the screen, they never change springboard. So it's really, no. I mean, you don't get to <laughs> take, put yeah. more icons in the screen or anything like that. It's just, a. I you'll mean, get a new dock with iOS 11. Well, and, but that, and that's, to me, that's the most interesting thing. You know, uh, I took a laptop computer with me on the vacation and I, you know, used Lightroom and to process my photos and all that stuff. But I really, as I'm watching this and thinking about this iPad, and I did bring an iPad Pro with me, thinking I probably could have brought a much lighter weight, easier device, especially with the, the changes that they're going to make in iOS 11. Yeah. That's all. It's, it's now, it's getting, it's what we expected, which is that Apple would move iOS and the iPad closer to a computing. Fully yeah. operational. Yeah. For instance, there's a file manager. You can look at the file yeah. system for the first time ever. And it's a download, so if you kind really of. hate file systems, you never have you to. You don't have it. to. But if you want one, just go get it, and it works great. Kind of how, uh, Andy, not exactly? Uh, not When people say a file system or a file manager, that's not like what you see like on a Mac or on Windows or on Android. You can't, you can't go, go to root and start rooting around in libraries. But it gives it's, – it's a typical Apple solution to a problem saying if people are asking that they want to have – a file manager, they don't really want to be able to type CD back, dot backslash, whatever. No. They want to be able to get a file that can see, be seen by one app and work with it with another app or manipulate it some way. And I think this is a nice compromise between both of those ideals, the, the safety and security and simplicity of let the, let the OS take care of the files for you and the power of, yes, but I have a Microsoft Word file that and two different Microsoft Word compatible apps and one will not be able to see the other until I upload this to Dropbox then download it again. Again, which is kind of silly so yeah it's a it's a great step forward the, the fact that there's apis for it uh, is also a big win so uh, like like so many of the announcements that come out during wwdc it's a nice demo and then you're like oh i can't wait until actually like uh, 10 months from now to see how developers leverage this into something much much better than the demo yeah yeah it's the unification with all the third-party storage providers like your google docs are in there your OneDrive stuff is in there your dropbox stuff is in there and it's all it's yeah. sort of exactly what we wanted where it's a visualized layer like it, it, they're not muddling up your files they're keeping all your files in their respective services and silos but it's providing you with a unified view and a secure way of moving in between those services yeah and there, there are a whole bunch of ways to smooth things out because we were, we're we're only barely aware of how much malarkey we're putting ourselves through <laughs> with this current system this morning I, so it took, took my walk to to, my, to a lunch 
lunch place to get a sandwich. And I set things up and, okay, well, I got to make sure that I catch up on my email. And I couldn't get into my, I couldn't get into my email until I updated my Dropbox password because the my 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 mail app is linked to Dropbox for file transfers, and I changed my Dropbox Dropbox pa password. I'm like, really? Like, I, and I can't and because the, the the app had not been written very very well. I can't just simply say, yeah, I'll deal with that later. Right now, I really want to check my email. I'm like, <laughs> no, I will not change. Uh -huh. And that's the sort of stuff. It'll be completely transparent to the app and transparent to the user. There'll just be a place where if you want to save a file, uh, a file attachments, for instance, here is where it can go. And it'll feel like you're just saving it onto a, a, a three and a half inch floppy. It's really and, interesting. Uh, Leo will know the pain that I speak of, but we use Drupal for iMore. And for the last two years, we've been trying to use iPads with it. And you press a button, you upload a file, and it's just not as fast as no. the Mac. And now with drag and drop and files, you have files in one pane, Drupal in the other, drag the files across, sucks them all up. I, I, Serenity's yeah. eyes went like wide, and she just went ee! The yeah. yeah, especially when you see, like, this is, this, is the, this is the real, like, minority report stuff we were promised. Not just like, <laughs> hey, look, as my finger is a mouse. I'm dragging this to this. It's like, no, this, put more in the pile, put more in the pile, take more. More yeah. of this and drag, and drag it into this. So yeah, you immediately see if you if you are a fan of the iPad, if you're this, if you're that weirdo who three years ago said, you know what, maybe I will. I'm going. I'm going to be in Europe for for a week and visiting three different cities. Maybe I'll take just my iPad and not my MacBook. This is the sort of thing where you just say, I was right. I was right. Well, that's and it's, it's so funny great. that you like, say that because that's exactly the question, the conversation I'm having with myself. I almost just brought an iPad on this last vacation. I'm going uh, on vacation again. <laughs> Only two a year. It seems like more. I know. I'm going on vacation again in September, and I'm doing exactly that. We're doing a riverboat uh, trip in France. And I think it, sh it feels so close that I could probably do everything I want to do on the iPad. Uh, I think... I think that with your iPad Pro and with if you're running at that point either the shipping version of the next version of iOS or the really, really stable, practically the gold master version of it, I well, think by it's then it will really... Be. Yeah, yeah. Then, I, then I think you're pretty good. As, as usual, the only uh, I've been asked uh, the number of times I've I've been asked to answer this question over the past couple of weeks. There was it was such a great demo during WWDC. It really is getting a lot of people thinking I was going to buy a MacBook. Should I buy an iPad instead? Or I've got an iPad and I haven't been really been using it. Maybe I should take it right back out of out of the closet. Uh, if the still the only the the only consistent Achilles heel is that you have to be able to within 90% accuracy predict what you're going to need your computer for because if i've if i have my oh i don't have it next week but if if i have my raspberry pi <laughs> it's in a, it's in a case with a, with a with an 80 dollar little lcd screen I can, with that in my bag, I can do anything I ever need to do with a computer. Any disaster that happens or any unexpected opportunity, I can deal with it. With an iPad, you at some point might find yeah. out that I don't have a way to get this damn file off of this device and move it onto here. Or there is some piece of software that the iPad can't even pretend that it knows about. Uh, but that's not... For, for for most uses, it really isn't a, a big deal. Uh, I mean, it's it's if anything, it's the situation's only only gotten better. When I first started using an iPad as a as a notebook, so to, so to speak, uh, the only time I would travel uh, with uh, with a MacBook is if I had a really complicated project where I had to coordinate a lot of apps and a lot of people and a lot of data. Now, for instance, now that Scrivener is and other like multi-file project apps are available in iOS versions, now again it really has to be: is my deadline happening during this week? Yes, then I'll take the MacBook. Is my deadline happening a couple of weeks after this, so that if I can only get 75% done of what I think I need to get done, will it not be a disaster? No. Okay, then take the iPad. Well, I think the trick is going to be to at some point say, okay. I'm going to take a month and and yep. eschew a desktop operating system. It's really interesting. Try, try to, for a week. You'll be surprised. Or even a week. It's really interesting to watch Apple address these particular issues. And I and I, I think it's real. I'm really glad it's Apple doing this because I think they're looking at it with very fresh eyes. How do we give desktop users what they want without making uh, this iOS touch environment too complex? Uh, make it work with touch. So I'm really interested. Now, I haven't played with iOS There's 11. I presume difference. you've installed it, Renee, right? 
Oh, yeah, totally. And there, there's one other sort of mental difference that people might need to get through. It depends on your use case. Some people will not notice this. Other people will notice it immediately, is that iPad is still security first. So on a Mac, for example, as you drag, any app you drag over is free to interact with the data. It right. can preview it. It can affect it. It can change it. On iOS, that is not the case. It will only it will only handshake and release security on the data when you actively drop it, when there's an explicit user interaction that you want to share with that app. So, for example, if you have some contact app you just downloaded and you're dragging someone's contact over it, it it can't start sucking in all your contact information unless you specifically drop it in that app. Otherwise, if you go right over it into another app, it will never know what was in that. It'll get metadata, but not the actual data. And that will affect some people, some people who want to do things like previewing colors or textures or something, but I don't think it'll affect most people. Yeah. So you've got a dock that comes and goes a lot, much like the Mac OS dock. Yes. Uh, you've got drag, drag and, and drop. drop. Apps. Is it arbitrary between any two apps? Any apps that yeah, support it's each system other, level. right? Yeah, yeah, but but it's protected in the in the sense you just described. And it's Renee. true multi-touch. Like so you can be holding these files with one hand, do the picture, the finger swipe to oh, go back wow. to the home screen. You can pull over. You can open you can't up. Can't even a, do a that at window. all on a Mac OS. No, it's it is completely ten finger multi-touch aware with wow. gesture support and everything. It's, yeah. it's really clever. It's uh, it, I mean because I hopefully it won't lead to a world in which we're expected to keep moving our hands <laughs> off of the fake keyboard and onto the screen or else we're going to have to rewind until all the times when Apple has said people don't want to operate a computer by stretching out their hands. It, it's completely unnatural. That's why we don't have multi-touch on the Mac. Uh, but, but really, it's, you have to it's put not it down too. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or or have it in an easel. That was that was my problem. When I was testing it out. It's like <laughs> I had to like give no come back iPad come back. <laughs> I want I want to manipulate your files. Uh, it's <laughs> it's it's uh, it's not it's not meant. To, I hope it's not meant to be a primary way of act, of use interacting with the with the device. But I think that it really is with those times where I can't I can't believe I'm doing this 18 <laughs> times because I need to get this done. I will happily like pull out the legs of my kickstand, flatten up my my iPad to do spend 30 seconds doing this really administrative thing that otherwise would have been not only a few minutes more, but also just endlessly irritating when there's obviously an easier way to do it. Of course, there's also an issue of apps. Uh, you know, there's professional style apps on a desktop that have to come to the iPad Pro. Although I look at people like Adobe, they've put Lightroom on there and they're really clearly going to uh, make Lightroom on iOS appear instead of a kind of an adjunct a, a sidecar to lightroom on the desktop oh and that affinity app was amazing it, 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 well i've been playing app. with affinity and i have to say there's things i can do in affinity that i i can't do in lightroom it was interesting because they have a shared memory architecture on ios so you can access uh, both you don't have to sort of determine predetermine if you're going to hit the cpu or the gpu you can access that shared memory architecture and that's something that is not the same when you have like an intel processor and then a discrete gpu that each have their own independent memory so they were saying that the affinity people were saying that they can do some things on the ipad that they just can't do on other interesting on other computing devices yeah uh, affinity is 20 bucks but it sounds like uh, well worth it serenity was saying it's as good as, as photoshop from her point of view it's Depend a mindset thing with, for me yeah yeah, it's 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 a variety of apps. There's a Autodesk uh, bought uh, one of my favorite iOS apps a while ago, a Graphic, uh, and it's when you have uh, when you have a, an app that's really been conceived as being attached to no one particular platform that's really focused on what people intend to do with it. It is such a wonderful app to use uh, on the iPad uh, and almost almost the same experience on the Mac, but you see their their little subtle changes to it. This is the same thing with uh, 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 Adobe and Microsoft, both need to get some sort of a special award for how they take this something as complex as Microsoft Office and bring it to a mobile platform in such a way that you don't notice the features that you're missing, even though you're missing a lot of features in Office, because if you're using this on your iPad with your little fold-up keyboard in a coffee shop, you probably were not going to be rebuilding a table of content, uh, contents uh, and, and and rechanging all of your footnotes. You were probably just doing some edits or writing a new chapter or looking at the changes someone else made to uh, a document that you're sharing. Uh, it's the same thing with Lightroom, which is for, I'd say, 85 to 90 percent of the stuff that I, I use Lightroom for and I'm very very persnickety uh, I can probably get that stuff done on the iPad Pro if, if it weren't for the lack of storage or the speed of uh, Wi-Fi internet uh, at, at my uh, at the coffee shops I and uh, hotels I usually work at so yeah I mean don't don't let that throw you off if there is not a one-to-one -one if, if, if your if your issue is I can't run Photoshop on my iPad 
maybe my, Adobe already has something that's better suited for the iPad, or maybe there is a different app that's very compatible with Photoshop that will let you do everything you want to do and maybe even do it faster. So if this really is a time where uh, I, I, I can't stress this enough. This is such a transformative year, 2017, uh, for any Apple fan, where if you're if you're a Mac user, it's time to think about not because of anything that's going on on the Mac side of things, but you may not be aware of how much advancements have been made in the iPad since the last time two years ago when your cousin came over and stayed three or four days, which was the last time you spent any long amount of time watching someone use an iPad. Uh, ditto for Windows. If you haven't used Windows in a while, you you don't know what it's, what it's like because you haven't seen it in a few years. But specifically about the iPad, it really is a highly credible machine. You're not a freak for deciding that maybe my next laptop should not be a MacBook Air. Maybe it should be an iPad and a keyboard. God, there's so much to talk about uh, that's happened, and I apologize if people say, "Well, we talked about this two weeks ago," uh, but we no, didn't we get the iPad. We didn't get the iPad, uh, and at least I'm sure Renee, you had a review unit, but Annie and I just got ours on what Thursday or Friday, so uh, we've had a chance to play with it. Um, I'm I'm doing stuff. This is Affinity Photo. I can do stuff in here that I really couldn't do in uh, Lightroom, including uh, fix. You know, kind of poor focus on, on a shot that I really liked, but it was kind of just a little bit, but using some of their filters. Um, I, you notice how fast it is, by the way. And um, that's one of the things is really important uh, for me with yeah. working with photos, large raw images. Now, can I work with raw images on the, that might be one issue. Um, uh, I haven't, uh, Lightroom will work with raw photos. A lot of photo apps will work with raw. I don't know about affinity only because I haven't tried it yet, right. but I'd be surprised if it, didn't, it knows that it really is pitching it as a professional level app. Right. So I'd be surprised if it, it has did. to. Yeah. And how Ross would I get, how would I get those in there? I mean, they, I, I presume this is finally, this lightning port finally is uh, high speed, right? USB three. With the adapter, you need one of the, you need the USB. But you need to get the new adapter because adapter, I have the old adapter. So I need to get the new adapter. If you adapter. had the one for the previous 12.9 inch, it's the same one. Okay. So unlike the previous uh, 9.7 inch Mac uh, yeah. iOS Pro, uh, what is it called? Uh, iPad. <laughs> it, this one is high speed port. So, so I could put a card reader. I, you know. Yeah, the card reader is high speed as well. The only thing, like, and we complained about this last week, but I, I'm still irked by it, is that the the cable isn't. You have to get the adapter. The USB-C to Lightning cable, it doesn't get the 3.0, oh, which I okay. think it just okay. hopefully gets fixed as fast as humanly, as fast as corporately possible. It's, I mean, Apple really, you know, in fact, Adam Engst wrote an article that I think uh, annoyed a lot of people in tidbits uh, saying, um, this is it. This is the beginning of the, of the end of Mac OS and the desktop. This is the move, which we've all expected. Am I misinterpreting him to to, to I just look iOS? outside and I still see trucks, you know, so I'm, I'm not worried about Well, that yeah, but Well, I, I I'm uh, we I I won't repeat that. I won't go into the long repeat of what I've been saying for for a couple of weeks, but I will say that once again, it seemed as though during WWDC, which is a gold-plated opportunity for Apple to give the Mac community that patent uh, patent standing in front of the the big flag of the United States of America speech, that big we will win. <laughs> this is a great thing. We're, we all love, love, love the Mac. We're going to show you how much we love the Mac. And most of their statements were, look at this new feature we're yeah. adding to the Mail app. And look how look at our great new iMac Pro. It is going to be the greatest Mac ever for writing iOS apps on. We haven't, if I would love, I don't believe that Apple's given up on Mac, but I don't believe they're showing us any signs that they are excited about the Mac. That's all yeah. I'm saying. Well, uh, you know, I mean, from a purely business point of view, iOS would, if you could make iOS as capable as a, a desktop computer, that would be the way to go. And um, we'll talk a little bit a about the story, Mac Pro, the I mean, $5,000 Mac Pro and iMac Pro in a bit. But um, there's a great story back when Snow Leopard came out where they went to Steve and, and they're like, how do we sell this? And I forget the gentleman's name, but he was a Safari marketing manager at the time. And he goes, we go with no new features. That's what we do. We say Snow Leopard has no <laughs> new features. And they're like, well, that's great because really it had like Exchange and a few other things right. and Grand Central Dispatch. But saying no new features is way better than saying a couple. And I think couple this year- A couple features, right. No, but this year is the same thing. Like the, they've recently had a huge reorg. The entire software organization is different. And the, the it's going to take them, I think, a good year to, to bring- all the stuff, the same as I work when they unify I work as a single code base. It's going to take them a year to get everything, to get mail, to get Safari, to get everything on that unified base. Um, 
And it's easier than with iOS because it all a lot of it came from a lot of the logic and the new material came from iOS. So getting the the Mac all ramped up on the engine is going to take a while. So instead of just saying, "Hey, look, growing pains," they come out and they say, "We're doing a Snow Leopard, and we've got all these great new core technologies for you, and a few little tweaks over here." And every once in a while, we like to do the what Syracuse calls "cat metaphor cat," uh, and everyone is happy. And then Apple has the time to sort of get that that new initiative underway. Mm. I'll get more worried when we start seeing things like Xcode appear on iOS because then Apple engineers can start I shifting. I think off that's the around map. the corner. Mm. I really do. Uh, I mean, people are well, using Pythonista and other apps yep. to develop apps uh, now on an iPad. But the compile times won't be great unless yeah. they're just like client, like well, within clients. I'll, I don't know. I'll this just say, a, I'll just this fast, this processor, somebody was saying in the chat room, Geekbench is as fast as the 13 inch MacBook Pro, right? It's, yeah, it's like a, ha yeah, probably like a broad, well, it's, it's, it's really, really good, but it's not multi, multi core throw everything at your compiler good. Yeah. Also, point. it's 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 a difference. There's a difference between a, a processor that's a syst overall system that's good at good, really fast for the operating system versus really fast for you having an idea of what you want to get done and getting it done real quick. Uh, and so there are some there are some problems with the form factor of a tablet that that so just don't necessarily think that that's uh, that, that that's the that's the end of the end of the road. Um, the only th I'll, I'll say is that anytime you spend my I have a number in my head that I cal recalculate from time to time when I when I do my finances that this is the amount of money that I can spend on something and not care about that amount of money. Uh, and if it's less than that amount of money, I'll just buy it and I won't care about it. It's about it's about the cost of two burritos. I don't know, but for a thousand, suffice to say that the price of a new laptop, no matter who makes it, is well above that. So I'm just saying that any time in the next year, if Apple has not come out of the gate with here is a really something that really, if Apple has not said or released something about the Mac that gets you really excited about your Mac, you owe it to that thousand dollars, fifteen hundred dollars, two thousand dollars to take a hard look at yeah. the iPad Pro. Not to or mention to take a hard look at a Windows machine because yeah. that's a lot of money, and they can't. I, I do believe that Apple's been trading on our faith in the Mac for the past two years at least, and that should end in 2017. They have to earn your next purchase. Absolutely. Well, maybe the next purchase is an iPad. I'm looking at benchmarks. Yeah. This is Geekbench 4. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm going to say right now, the problem with benchmarks in general, especially Geekbench, is it's, you know, it's synthetic. Mm -hmm. um, but if you look at this score alone, the iPad Pro uh, comes very close to, uh, it beats last year's 13-inch yeah. And comes very close to matching this year's 13-inch. Close enough to make up for the $2,000 difference, I would say. There, there, there's a consistent thing I love about all like iPhones and iPads. I will look I will look at the hardware and the benchmarks and I'll think to myself, this looks suspiciously overpowered for the features it yes. has right now. <laughs> So, but so even even if even if it means like iOS 12 or iOS 13 before it even starts to make that iPad sweat a little bit, boy, it's great to have to know that there are at least uh, eight cylinders inside that car that you're not even touching during your grocery run. Well, furthermore, if you're cool. happy with the speed of the uh, MacBook, you'd be happier with an iPad Pro nowadays. Well, the interesting thing is, like the iPhone 7, you can peg the a the A10 and iPhone 7 using portrait mode and using some advanced right. photo features for you paint with that, like finger paint with deformation masks. You can do that. The A10X, uh, I had a chance to talk to James Kuda, Procreate, uh, and he was saying that it's not just the A10X, it's also Metal 2, and it's like Metal 2, I think, alone is giving him a 4X increase. Performance over OpenDL, like 2x for the original, 2x for Metal 2, uh, and the Metal 2 marks for the iPad Pro is also yeah. Look at look high. at this. Uh, look at really the Metal good. scores. iPad, uh, all the iPad Pros from uh, this year and last uh, this year are beating the, the MacBook yeah. Pros. I mean, this is purpose designed silicon. This is incredible. Um, so. <laughs> Uh, and I only bring this up. Yeah. I don't. I don't look. There's a real reason to have a desktop computing system, and there's a real reason to have a desktop operating system. And there, I'm not. I don't think it's either or. Uh, but I think Apple's making a better and better case for leaving behind for many people leaving behind the uh, the, the laptop yeah. and bringing an iPad. There, there, there are a lot of variables. For a lot of people, it's going to be. I don't care how fast the CPU is. I can. <laughs> lift the lid of this and be typing in 10 seconds on my iPad. I have to <laughs> take this out of the case. I have to take my keyboard out of the right. case. I have to turn on, I have to react, make sure they find each other via Bluetooth. Or even if I have a smart case, I have to make sure these both things are working. There are a lot of convenience features. That, that's why, that, that's why one of the best features of any Apple product is two week return policy. Right. We don't care what the reason is. So long as it is, as long as you took really good care of it and you return it with everything that we sold it to you with, 
you can see, you can say that you're, I'm still upset about the the death of Troy Donahue. Say, okay, there you go. Here's your money back. All three thousand dollars of it. I hope the Troy Donahue. And I don't is, have to bring a camera and, and with Troy me Donahue anymore because the iPhone yeah. Seven cameras in here. So, yeah, <laughs> uh, which is pretty funny. Uh, I mean, yeah, I always, I was, I've complained for years that they, why would they not put a better camera in the iPad? Yeah. Uh, well, now they're matched. It doesn't have the two sensors, but uh, I found the camera very good. Uh, well, it's weird great. to and hold you up. Can uh, focus you know, great. But it's, that's what's nice is you have the biggest viewfinder I've yeah. ever seen. Especially for macros. Yeah, I mean, I still hope I don't see a lot of people taking pictures of their tablets. But you know what? I've kind of grown accustomed to the fact that people do. Uh, a lot of people I've learned. I, I, I've learned not to judge. And also, yeah. uh, every so many of these features, in, in the context of finding out how big app, Apple is pushing into AR, <laughs> now you start to sort of reevaluate, go back to your notes again, saying, okay, so they've added a new super high frame rate <laughs> to the iPad. They also have the CPU that is wicked, wicked faster than I need to compose right. email on. Right. And now there's a there's a camera that is way way better than common uh, common judgment has oh, ever decided that, uh, that that a camera needs to be and it's like oh this fall is going to be a lot of fun yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, let, well we'll take a break uh, we're gonna fix renee's audio got you we'll call you back in a second uh I'm, it's breaking up for some reason uh but when we come back let's talk about that uh there's uh and also uh, not to deprecate uh the the new uh high sierra which sounds a little bit like Snow Leopard, but in fact, I think the one feature alone is is a massive change, mm -hmm. a massive change. We'll talk about that. And I was wondering, and now there's some clarity, uh, Andrew Cunningham writing in Ars Technica about uh, something that's going to happen to you and me and everyone else this fall with the new Mac OS. And uh, I I didn't watch the uh, keynote, so I didn't I didn't get the reality distortion field. But really, a five thousand dollar iMac Pro. Oh, you can go way higher than 5000 Leo. <laughs> yeah, that's... way higher. <laughs> we'll talk about you that. Sell your, you want to sell your car? <laughs> really? Really? Is that what pros like really want? I think want? it tops out at 17 isn't it? Like, what? I think so. Like B BMW will sell you a sports car, but you really want the one with all the letters after it. Like 18 cores <laughs> and 128 megabytes and 2 terabytes of solid state. and. But it's an iMac. <laughs> Boy, right. is it ever. <laughs> it's it's an iMac. All right, well, space let's, black. It's not a ava available till end, end of the year, so I can I have some time to save up. Yeah. Uh, we're going to take a break. Come back with more. Renee Ritchie, I'm more dot com. Andy Nako from the Chicago Sun Times, and a brand new tracker, the Tracker Pixel. It is. I just got the Tracker Pixel. This is exciting. Tracker, a coin size tracking device. Make sure you don't lose a thing. I didn't lose my luggage. I didn't lose my keys, didn't lose my wallet, didn't lose remotes. Don't wait. How much time do you spend looking for stuff you've misplaced in life? A lot. A lot. Eight years ago, Tracker changed everything when they released the first Bluetooth tracking device. They're doing it again. The new Tracker Pixel. Oh, look, they have a 4th of July special collector's edition. That's cool. With a I Heart America and an America flag on it. Actually, it's one of the neat things about the tracker. They're tiny. They're about the size of a quarter. Lighter than a quarter because it's anodized aluminum. It does have a replaceable battery. Great battery life because you use Bluetooth LE. And you can print and engrave them, which is really cool. So you can really customize your tracker. It's the lightest Bluetooth tracking device on the market. Pair it with your smartphone. In fact, you can pair it with multiple smartphones. And your every phone can pair up to 10 different trackers you attach it to your keys you attach it to your bike whatever it is you don't want to lose the new tracker pixel is awesome because how many times have you you know left something under a couch or you know has fallen under a couch the tracker pixel lights up with bright pixels so you can see it it can be making noise your phone has a map you're not it's going to less time looking for your stuff than ever before one of the things i love about the tracker t-r-a-c-k-r -R, by the way one of the things i love about the tracker is this crowd GPS network. There's there's nobody doing this. Partly because Tracker in eight years has sold more than a four and a half million trackers. There's a ton of them out there. So that means anybody who's running the Tracker software on their phone, and that's lots of people, when they walk by your device, your Tracker, they'll ping you. They'll say, hey, I just saw your device. So your map doesn't just show where you left your phone. It shows anywhere or your keys or anything else, anywhere it could be. The tracker.com use the offer code MacBreak because we've got a special deal 20% off any order. And look at that great 4th of July edition. I'll tell you what, I love having the tracker because I, I did not lose anything on this trip. 
Thank you, Tracker. T H E T R A C K R dot com. Use the promo code MacBreak for twenty percent off before you go on vacation. Before your kids start borrowing your stuff, put the tra put the tracker on it. I, I tell you, it's a great thing. And we thank him so much for making Mac Break Weekly possible. Uh, I'm excited uh, about APFS. One of the questions I had, the Apple, the new Apple file system. One of the questions I had, we I think we even talked about before I left, was even though Apple kind of surreptitiously snuck this in on iOS 10, would they do the same when it was ready for Mac OS? And now, according to Andrew Cunningham, we know the answer. Yes. Uh, the new file system, when you install uh, the new uh, High Sierra, it will convert your boot drive to APFS regardless of whether they have an SSD, a spinning drive, a fusion drive. You Now, he says in the current beta installer, you have an option to uncheck the box, but it is checked by default. Uh, and it's presumed i think it's safe to presume apple will do some compatibility checking and so forth what happened there we go um but my, my screen went blank but uh i think this is very good news we've been we've been using a file system that's 20 years old hfs plus it won't go away apple says hfs plus is is going to continue for compatibility uh high sierra will be able to boot from hfs plus partitions disk utility will retain the ability to format drives either HFS or APFS, along with the other formats it supports. Um, you have, Are you also doing the beta, Renee? Uh, yeah, so there's a couple things that are that are really, really clever. First, I don't know if you had a chance to see it, but Craig Federici, when he was on the talk show, he revealed that in iOS 10.1, they did sort of a virtual conversion, checked it for errors, rolled it back, sent the data, iOS 10.2 did the same thing again. And then that means that they sorted out all the problems before they committed in iOS 10.3. And that is, uh, that's a really, really clever, sort of sneaky model to doing this. And now they have a much bigger problem because like you said, there's fusion drive to support, there's external drive to support. There's a whole bunch of features that make a lot of sense on a Mac that you don't, that are sort of beyond the scope of what uh, an iOS device does. Uh, and they're doing the same thing when the beta gets installed. I think mine actually asked me if I wanted it or not. I don't remember what the checkbox, I think it was a requester, uh, but either way I went all in and my, it was. I barely noticed. It. it took a couple minutes, and I was up and running. They do say that if you have external drives, couple there's no real minutes, reason. Couple really? Yeah. Wow. Um, it was super fast. If you have external drives, there's no real reason. You can convert them if you want to, but just out of a data integrity standpoint, I wouldn't do it unless you need to. Um, but uh, I've had absolutely no problems with it, and it's it's really great. Uh, yeah, it's about time. And of course, uh, now that we're almost exclusively using SSDs, uh, yeah, it's it's much needed. Um, and you get so many other benefits, like just the cloning and the snapshotting, yeah, yeah. and it, it'll work with all the Apple systems, just like Time Machine is being updated for it, and, and all the key plumbing, and it's... Uh, it's well, that's really, good, because really Time really Machine was always a kludge, and this will now be really a real way to snapshot and Absolutely. do versioning. And wireless Time Machine, I mean, is a, is a thing again. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. This and is really exciting. It, See, to me, maybe I'm a wonk or whatever... I, I, yeah, admittedly, High Sierra is another one of those releases where there's no big visible changes. But that, this is a massive change. Yeah, it's huge. And, and it well, will yeah, affect it, everybody. Yeah, it, re it really is like, yeah, it's, it's, it's fundamental, it's architectural, which means that suddenly everything is faster, everything is better, everything is a little reliable, but you don't know why that is. Uh, for, for instance, we're, we're, it has been optimized for SSDs. It has been optimized for security and backup, just like Renee was saying. But things like let's make sure that when someone launches an app, that data, that, that first flush of data hits so quickly you don't even see a pause. When you try to open a file or open a large movie file, it will cut down the amount of time it'll take just for that first wash of bits uh, to be handled by the app and to be put on your screen. So everything is going to, see, even if you're running it on an older machine, your older machine will seem so much faster because you were never aware of how many file system bottlenecks that you were dealing with with the old file system. This, this is, remember, this is this is water going through lead pipes <laughs> with with <laughs> lead and iron pipes, and it's been cleaned because you don't know you don't know how much waste and sewage treatment has happened at every junction to make it safe to drink. And now they decided to rip out all of your pipes in the entire community and finally give you a modern water system. And you're like, oh wow, it. 
doesn't taste a little bit like carrots when I drink right out of the tap anymore. I wonder why that was. And we, we're no longer, we don't, uh, uh, I'll, I will not extend the analogy, but you know how to <laughs> Sometimes well, I have a hard time remember, following though. following you. Somehow we got to carrots and that's when I kind of lost you. So good. That's, that's, right. when, that's, when, I hit the, that's when I hit the abort switch. What, what, I'm, what, I'm going for, what I'm going for is that, as, what I'm going for is that it will make everything better. You don't need to understand why it's better. There is not a whole lot of downsides to it. The only open questions that I've been navigating is what happens when things go wrong? Because people who the people and software that are really, really good at recovering hard drives and recovering backups are super, super good at seeing what what the old file system could do to a file and figuring out how to fix it. They, it's going to be a lot of people, very smart people starting off with a, not a lot of experience with this file system. So I don't know if it's going to be as easy to recover a damaged drive, whether it's a physically or a logically damaged drive. But it, you, you got to move forward. It's safe enough. It's safe enough to put into play. So let's start the process. There's yeah. a mindset difference too to remember, especially on something like the Mac where you're doing clones. So previously you might have had a photo of Andy and you went copy, 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 copy and duplicated it four times. Then you run out of space and you figure, well, I'll delete three of the duplicates and I'll get the space back. But now they're just clones. So you can start deleting those duplicates and it's not really going to change the amount of space you have on your drive. So Apple's doing a bunch of stuff to sort of make the way it shows data um, more intuitive. But it, for some people who are used to monitoring everything at the bit level, it's going to take a little bit of getting used to. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, you, 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 suddenly I've got 800 gigabytes of free space on my drive I didn't have before. Like after after starting for the new Mac, it's probably because you did not know how many times you had multiple copies right. of something that you keep moving from moving in from Dropbox or people keep sharing to you from someplace else. Well, like people said, noticed that on iOS, didn't they? It's the gifts. Yeah. It's all those it, gifts. It's, it's brilliant. So you, you, suddenly you had gigabytes lit back. Yeah. Yeah. No, super, super cool technology, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see how they roll it out. But I think they're, I think they're going to give people a choice initially. And if you're a little bit reticent, just wait, wait, let people like yeah. me and Leo uh, take take those well, initial there's, punches, there's a, and then when you're happy, do the conversion. Somebody's asking in the chat and, room: Will uh, you still be able to read NTFS and XFAT and uh, yeah. and FAT32? You still be yeah, able to read I'll, all I don't those? Think any of that stuff's changed. Yeah, yeah. yeah every, everything should be backward compatible. Apple's priority here is to make sure that you don't even notice they did anything at all. Uh, yeah. they, uh, they will. They don't even necessarily want you to know. They don't want you to ever say, thank God for APFS. Yeah. They'll no, say, my God, right. my, my computer's so much faster now, or my God, I have so much storage. But they don't ever want you to identify APFS as the hero or the villain of anything. So if you were looking for data points that said Apple's still committed to uh, the Mac OS, this would be one. Um, um, uh, I mean, also, <laughs> like, let's again. Let, let's you, you, that's the Paul, that's the Paul McCartney line. The John Lennon response line is, <laughs> "Oh, good. They decided that they no longer want to support a special operating system just for the Mac. Right. They want the Mac to use the, the iOS. System. Uh, but yeah, that, right. but that but that but that points out to another advantage of APFS. If you have the same operating system on every device, not just for file files, system. but the same security, yeah. the yeah. same security system right. uh, platform on all devices, it will make so many things that again, if you had any idea how much trouble a developer is going through to make to make a highly dysfunctional file system look normal all that goes away right now and suddenly it behaves nicely across devices without anything behind the scenes going uh, going nuts uh, for your behalf so those were the t you know i would the 10 point the new mac uh, ipad pro i was very excited about I'm, I'm i did not get to as i said uh, watch the keynote i was just like reading with poor internet bits and pieces got excited about that ordered that right away with the new keyboard I uh, got pretty excited about uh, High Sierra. We were, you know, saying, what are they going to call it? But High Sierra makes sense. This is like Snow Leopard fully, fully baked. Mountain Lion. It's, you know, and that's going to come out in the fall, right? With yes. iOS 11. Yes. And then I got to the iMac Pro. And I went, what the what? But I, but I, again, I'm just reading like headlines. So the headline for me is, Okay, well, we still haven't got a Mac Pro replacement. That's, you know, a year out or whatever. That's next year. But we thought you would like this, Pros, an iMac <laughs> that, you know, has no limits. It has the latest uh, Intel processors that go up to Xeon. 18 cores. They, do they call it Xeons or? Yeah, they're Xeon. Okay, because Intel had some weird X name. Core i9, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's the i9. Um it's uh, okay, okay. Uh, turbo boost, uh, okay. Forty-two megs cache. That's the all. That's all Intel, and there'll Basic be a lot of PCs. There'll be a lot of PCs with these. Yeah. Um, but these are that's workstation or server category processors. Um, what else? Why? Why else am I paying five? Starting 
at five thousand dollars on huge, this thing. Huge RAM, a uh, huge huge amount of RAM you can put in it. A uh, huge amount of SSD, and it's really it's really it's still a the five. For it's still the five K Retina, right? Yeah, it's the new mm -hmm. 5K Retina panel, which is very, very similar. It's a slightly different panel. It does 10 bits to the T-Con, which then oh, okay. dithers them so you get billions of colors on the panel. So, okay. But that's not. That's which a very is, nice... I like my 5K iMac. It's for people who want that panel but also want uh, a workstation, basically. And you can people get 128 gigs. Yeah, but yeah. unlike a workstation, uh, you, can't up, you can't open it up and put something no. else in, right? No. It's just you're buying this and using it for five, whatever number of years. The vague, well, but may are you with the Vega... I mean, this is Radeon Vega. I don't know anything about the Radeon Vega Pro 56 graphics processing unit, but... That's great if you don't want CUDA cores. Want I'm guessing it's not going to be something that, you know, Alex Lindsay's going to be jumping up and down over. Oh, yeah, yeah you, you never know. Awesome. Realize that GP, GPU is not just for graphics professionals. It's also for, like, AI professionals and people who just need yeah. abstract, yeah. arbitrary, experimental fastness. So so I'm looking at... I, I just... I mean, okay, $5,000. I... Uh, I don't see. So mostly it's that processor and the chance to go to 128 gigs of memory, which no one needs, but maybe you know it that you need it because you're designing rocket ships or something. Yeah, uh, you got Core ML now, Leo. You'll you'll <laughs> be building out the future. I think if you're working on, uh, well, okay, if you're working on Apple stuff, of course. But I mean, most people, you know, if you're using TensorFlow or whatever, you're, you're not going to buy a, a, an iMac Pro. Um, did they mention the Mac Pro at all? They, no. it was it was sort of mentioned before the show that they weren't going to be discussing the Mac Pro uh, at WBDC. That's a that's a next year story. Okay. And that'll be the modular computer that for people who really want to be able to change things and mess around with things, they'll have that option. Yeah. yeah. So hard for me it's, to it's, and it's, the Mac Pro iMac Pro won't be available till December. Does that mean if they ship five, they have to ship five by December thirty first? Yeah. I think is my understanding. <laughs> this reminds me a lot of the the Mac Pro announcement, the trash can Mac. Because they yes. didn't pre-announce that way ahead of nothing time. Nothing about Phil's ass, but yes, it was. Yes, <laughs> yeah. But you know, the the, the fun the uh, that was one of the most fun parts of the entire keynote because <laughs> it's like they went to a lot of trouble to really make sure that in, in the cutaway view and look how big the fans are. Look what the airflow of active fan propelled coolness is like through this thing. As if to say, yes, we realized that passive airflow was not a good idea. We were indeed right about that. Don't worry about it. This one has electrically powered turning spinning propellers that will push air forcibly through this machine. Just ju dust around your desk. Will it hover? Tomorrow, please. Will it hover? Yes. My <laughs> is there, so uh, have you guys assessed that there is a market uh, for this uh, particular... There were a lot of people at Dub Dub who were like, you weren't allowed to touch it. You could only look at it. And they had very serious looking gentlemen on either side of it to ensure that. Uh, but it had a lot of a lot of interest, mostly from people who have been using iMacs in lieu of Mac Pros and who just seriously do want an all-in-one, but just want it more powerful. What the, Apple's mentioned that their mix for these Pro machines isn't high. That people buy mostly MacBooks by a huge margin. Right. But of the people who is that, you know, that small percentage you want Pro machines, there is part of that market who wants the all-in-one. It's it's really tricky to make a pro level desktop machine because once the the more expensive it gets, the more powerful it gets. Now you're talking about specific uses that are so that are completely unique to each purchaser. Uh, and so I've in the time in the time since it was announced, I've talked to a lot of people who don't bat an eye at spending five, six, seven, oh, even yeah, ten thousand yeah. dollars oh, on yeah. a desktop machine. But they're like for. I'm buying an $8,000 machine because this has to suit me perfectly. And I've I've heard from a great many people that are not terrible that, that are still waiting for the desktop Mac Pro because their reaction is so what I didn't ask for a really super powerful iMac. I need a desktop machine with where I can open up and put things in and take them out so that in three in two years time I'm not trying to sell this to to buy the new piece of hardware that I could actually has the thing I want in it. I want to be able to have I want to be able to have this on my desktop for three or four years and when one business or one client or one contract requires me to have this thing upgraded for a certain task i can do that so i'm not so by all means this is a really anything with a pro label on it it's a hard hard thing to design it's especially hard if you are only going to be designing one example of these things uh, apple's designing two pro mac desktops so hopefully whoever is not terribly excited about the imac pro is going to be really excited about what apple shows them next year Assuming that it has right angles on the box and a, something to be pulled <laughs> off to reveal the inside of the box, I don't think that Apple will go half wrong. Or yeah. rack mounted. You can't rack mount this iMac. Emmerich yeah. is well, pointing sure, out that sure there, Alex will figure it out. there are that is upgradable to the extent that you can upgrade the RAM and that the CPU yeah. is a plug-in CPU, which means you could perhaps plug in a, a, a bigger, faster 
a CPU. Here's the tear. Gotta get your suction cups. Yeah, yeah. You don't really trust me. You want don't want to open those, but you can. Um, we've done it. Uh, yeah. So, uh, and somebody else is saying, uh, like uh, Atort uh, Aloha, who is a photographer, pro photographer, said this is something pro photographers will want. That's true. That that screen is great. And I get that, uh, this is our chat room on screen if you're watching the video. I get that because uh, even on my current 5K iMac, I can't quite go as fast as I'd like going through photos. I'd love to be able to just go through. I watched Lisa uh, on uh, using photos and smaller files because she's using a micro four thirds camera. Just go boom, 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 boom as she reviews her photos and picks them. I have to wait loading. Okay, wait loading. Yeah. Okay, and, and that's it'll kind support of support H.265, so video professionals will be able to get through you know their editing tasks, HDR, 4K right. video faster. Are the hard drives faster? It's still NVMe, right? I believe PCI. so. Some models got faster, faster channel. But, okay, yeah. okay, that would make a difference. Um. I just I feel like pros want uh, upgradeability, want more upgradeability. Don't care so much about the form factor. I guess if you're an artist, if you're a photographer, an artist, that then maybe how it looks is important to you, especially if in a studio setting you want to show it to clients. But I think you know a lot of people just want a big honk and work. The open the compact start the open concept startups, Leo. They have to have one of these on every desk so when yeah. the VCs walk in. Look yeah. how we're spending <laughs> your money. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what the, that's dog, what the CEO is going to want. Hot dog. So what's the that, top? That's what this. It's going to be the number one the number one desktop for CEOs to read their their inbox on. Yeah, yeah. I have a iMac Pro. Uh, what do you have? I, I can't. Uh, Renee, Renee can probably you know vouch for this. That we uh, how many times have we seen this happen? Where we're given a tour of like an office <laughs> where a lot of people are doing really advanced things, and you say, "Oh, I, I'm surprised that." That this whole team of developers is using company laptops that still has like a DVD drive inside it, and then you're in the CEO's office, and yep, of course they've got the water cooled, you know, Craig fifty three thousand computer. That <laughs> it's like, I'm guessing that you're not model doing new weather models of tornadoes on this thing, sir. I'm guessing you're using it just to get instant messages from yeah. that person sitting just outside the door to tell you that your next meeting is coming up. Thunderbolt 3 is nice. This is the first iMac yeah. uh, with Thunderbolt 3. That's going to make And it kept difference. the legacy ports. So it kept the old happy. ports. You still nice. have a, you have a card reader, which I don't think yeah. any well, iMac has had. They have, no, they have no, all had always, iMacs. That's always can. been there. Oh, it has. If, you, you just you just haven't you just have never used them. Never look at it. Yeah. The whole damn thing. You're kidding. My iMac has an SD card reader. Almost certainly, oh. and a headphone jack. I'm a, I'm a little surprised it doesn't. Uh, did they say Renee? Did you? I couldn't get any information about this. Is it possible to remove the stand and put an ESO mount? That was a complaint that a lot of people have been throwing my way. That they I can't. I can't. I, I have everything say, on arms. Yeah. They didn't say, but previously you could buy the visa mount as a secondary option. Yeah. When the, yeah. when it was on sale. I'm assuming this will be the same because it's the same chassis, but. And it's space we'll gray. Yes. They had to do something to get make us angry, Renee. So I bet they did that just out of spice. <laughs> All right, fine. We'll give you an Ethernet port on your ten thousand dollar precious computer. Pro apps are black, Leo. That's just the way how do we know with that. a? There's no pricer, no configuration. How do you know how much it's going to cost? I think I forget. One of the websites went out and sort of priced all the components. Oh, yeah, it's, uh, oh. CDNet. I uh, want a fully loaded iMac Pro, right? CDNet. Better sit down at more than seventeen thousand dollars now this could be an ipad play where it actually comes out at twelve thousand and you think you just saved yourself 5k <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh only twelve thousand dollars even that they said five thousand kind of stopped me it made me chill uh, when the mac pro came out we went through the same thing we we're like all busy adding it to the car like, what the oh i know i did that yeah and then i ended up buying the the base model because i just couldn't oh i'm sorry never you want get... wi-fi with that okay well that's another thousand dollars <laughs> Never give Intel any more money than you have to. All right. And I apologize again for rehashing old stuff. Uh, HomePod. Uh, we expected some sort of Siri device. Apple uh, answered our questions. They said, we're going to be, it's really a speaker. <laughs> it's really just a which speaker. Is, which is fine. It's a, yeah. it's a really good play for a first generation product. And I've, I, it's, it's, it's a way to get the device into the door. And I think in two years time, it will be much more than a speaker, which means that the first generation has to be a one hell of a great speaker. And that's something that it's Apple too can small really to be a hell of a great job. speaker, isn't it? So we I'd did be, the Pepsi challenge, surprised. Leo, and I, I went over this previously, but it would, and I don't, I don't want to like this because I have a whole bunch of Sonos here. I have, I don't even want to imagine how much Sonos I have here, but we did a Pepsi challenge where there was the home pod, I'm never going to get that name right. Uh, the HomePod, the uh, Sonos speaker, and the Alexa. And we went through six different songs. Some of them were like a live versions of songs. Some of them were the, the studio versions of the songs. And they were all different kinds of music. And they would 
switch between them. Uh, and immediately the Sonos and the HomePod just blow away the Echo because it's, it's not really, a, it's like it's a speaker, but it's not really a speaker. It was very small and tinny. But Sonos, I would say one of the songs, Sonos held its own, but the HomePod was incredibly better for a lot of the music. And I think it comes down to the A8 being the DSP. And that's enough silicon that Apple can essentially do what it does with the iPhone 7 Plus camera. And that is instead of computational photography, do computational audio, where it's just handling all these processes and using all these, uh, these different speaker elements to reform the sound. And it's not like Dolby Atmos because they don't have all the discrete channels to know where the sound should go. They're doing advanced modeling and all, continuously reading the room acoustics and adjusting does for them. Does it sound like it's stereo? It sounds like it's filling your like you can put two of them in and it it still sounds can you can it, you pair two experience. like you can with you the can Sonos you can put two you can put so three you can, you have can left, put four right. and they'll adjust depending on how they'll, many you put in the room keep, they're happy to keep taking your money Leo yes you can put twelve in a room <laughs> like it's like watch bands <laughs> yeah but that 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 is that is an interesting uh, comment it's like I, I've been testing out a uh, uh, set of audio engine uh, Bluetooth speakers that I was kind of skeptical about but uh, they 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 i i did there's guys kind of skeptical about but the mere fact that they are two separate speakers and good speakers it really fills the room without anything having to do anything really fancy and they're good speakers too and the separation of true stereo as opposed to just good looking good sounding sound that seems to fill the room that's a pretty big deal so that's something i'm really keen to keen to see it's like retina for ears, Leo. That's the only way I can describe it. And again, I'm not good at audio, so you might find you might have a much better reading on this when you hear it than I do. But to me, it's like after I heard it, the Sonos sounded a little bit duller and a little bit muddier, and I wanted to hear the AirPod again. It does have seven tweeters and a four-inch woofer. I think that woofer is the coolant. I think they actually built all the cooling into that woofer, which would be clever because uh, it's like inverted. Tweeters are the things that get hot, though. Yeah. Um, hmm. But you know, one of the one of the coolest things about any of these uh, smart speakers is the tweeter array because do you think it don't? It's not just lots of tweeters. It's tweeters that are. It's, it's basically think of them as sound sensors that are giving 360 degree coverage of a plane around this device. So. When I see stuff like that and I think about demos I've had at certain companies, I think about, so in an update a year and a half later, it can figure out that there are three people in this room. And based on what it knows about the movement of people through the house, it can figure out that, okay, it's Andy and Renee uh, and Sylvia is still like in the den somewhere. So I'm going to make sure that if there is a message that's not uh, that's not terribly private for Andy, I'll send it into this room. Or even the ability to tell a, a smart thermostat, there are people in this, d using just sonar, there is there are human bodies in this room, there are no human bodies in this other room. So maybe you want to redirect the heat and the air conditioning to this part of the house, not to other parts of the house. That has not been announced or even hinted at by Apple, but this is technology that is very real and very functional. And anybody who's designing a home appliance is, uh, who, who, if, if they're designing something to be sold for more than a year, they're thinking very actively about how can we use this, this sound, not just to deliver sound, but also to deliver information to the CPU inside this machine. And Craig mentioned this, so I think it's safe to talk about, but uh, the they didn't talk about Siri at all publicly uh, because they're, they're going to show that off later in the year. But uh, you can stand there and I could be standing next to Andy and uh, the speaker can be across the room and I can just talk normally. And even if Andy can't hear me, the speaker can, which is, it makes me think of like Daredevil where suddenly you're like, blah, 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 <laughs> and all you hear is me speaking because it is doing all of that stuff on the AA processor to sort of pull apart the sound and read what's happening in the room. And of course, it's serious. We're going to have to wait and see how consistent it is with that experience. But uh, the people who have heard the Siri were really, really impressed with it. So I'm very, so this is, uh, will it do the same thing Sonos does, which is uh, party mode without latency? In other words, multiple speakers in different locations. Yes. AirPlay 2 also does multi-room. Yeah. Okay, and it works well. Yeah, so the AirPlay 2 is a big shift to multi-room, and this will work both with Apple Music natively and with any system over AirPlay 2, which will also do the multi-room if you have it set so up. So I have to say, uh, and this isn't the only data point, but this the death knell for Sonos is ringing. Uh, they haven't. Been, they said they were going to. They were going to support uh, Amazon's Echo. They haven't yet. They said they were going to do that six months ago, uh, at the beginning of the year. Um, I, you'd be. I think you'd be mistaken to buy another Sonos product at this point. Not, not and by the way, like you, Renee, I've spent. Yes. Un I don't even want to know because I've never added it up because I only buy it a little at a time. <laughs> yes, that's the thing. But, but I have many Sonos speakers. they don't speakers. have other businesses the way Apple does, so they have to maintain solvency with their speaker business. They, I don't, I think it's over. 
I, I wouldn't say so. I hope not. It's yeah. because they have cross it's, yeah, they're they're cl they're, cr they're cross platform and also unlike Apple, as as Renee said, they are a speaker business. So if they want, if they decide that hey, it would be great if we made a speaker that's designed specifically to be uh, a soundbar type speaker. We want to have a, a a bathroom speaker that only costs about seventy dollars and is waterproof and everything is is complete. You could drop it in the tub if you had to, uh, and it would work just fine. Uh, and all these sort of things to make the thing more valuable. You you think about all these things you're doing in your smart home, where maybe it just started off with a couple of bulbs. And then that, that now that you've got nine bulbs, you're deciding you're looking at that thermostat that came with the house that was built in 1968, and you're thinking maybe it's time to replace that thermostat. By the time you get to a certain level of trust of this system, you are tr you are looking for ways in which you can improve everything around your life by adding things to this network. So the fact that Apple has this one speaker that is great as an AirPlay target for arbitrary uh, sound sources, but really is an Apple music device, it's going to be a while before it can give that kind of flexibility. And if there are people who already have a 300, 500, even thousand dollar investment in Sonos, they're not going to be really eager to drop an incompatible device yeah. into that place. But it's a, it's it really isn't it's it's one of the more interesting ideas that Apple has had for a product in the in the past couple of years, I think, because it is is well is so well tuned into what they do extremely well. Like I said at the top of the show, uh, and also people are be people are different about music today than they were just ten years ago. I when, when I moved here a number of years ago. I only un I only recently unpacked my stereo, like the, the 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 tuner that I bought in 1993 and the speakers I bought in 1995, only just to sort of like I wanted like knobs and lights in my office. And I don't really use them. And when I decided to like finally get a real stereo again, it had nothing had no correlation whatsoever to that old idea. So there are a lot of people that maybe have been doing that. They've been listening to their music mostly through the sound bar and their TV set, which is a really good speaker, and through little portable Bluetooth speakers, which are very good speakers. And rather than spend nine hundred dollars on a really good tuner and a, a decent pair of speakers, maybe they are very very happy to put a three hundred fifty dollar beautifully designed Apple uh, and gorgeously listed gorgeously demoable uh, speaker in their room and then maybe they'll buy a second one and then because the, the two work so well in the living room they'll buy a third for the bedroom so this is a this is an intriguing intriguing product dare we hope that they start supporting airplay 2 and sonos leo because then we can just add one of these in and consider it like, in airplay yeah. 2 to whatever we want to i'm puzzled i feel like sonos uh you know they changed ceos uh they admit mm -hmm. that they missed the voice thing and they haven't yeah, done they well much. The only th new product they've announced in a year is basically a, a sound bar with a bass. The, so the play bass. Hold your TV. Yeah. And I, f I almost, I mean, I look, Sonos, you know, I, I love you guys, but uh, I almost feel like they're asleep down there in Santa Barbara. Oh. And this, it, it, it just, Apple, it just, this is a compelling offering. If it sounds, a, yeah. see, I didn't think it could sound as good as a Sonos, but if it sounds as good as a Sonos... Sounds better. So at least in my, I spent. And admittedly, this isn't competing better. with your five one stereo, and you know if you have a really nice speaker system and a really nice stereo Our system, they're not trying here. to keep, compete <laughs> with that. But what they're trying to do is compete really more with Sonos and perhaps with Echo, and uh, and Google's uh, Home, perhaps. It, it, people are expecting to be, have a little bit of magic in their speaker, even if it's a limited amount of magic, like well, the the implementation of Siri that we've seen uh, in the HomePod. Uh, it it just goes to show how complicated this thing is. Apple can give a thousand demos in which nobody walks away thinking that this isn't the best little uh, seven inch speaker I've ever heard in my life, but then they'll go home and to their $129 Google home device and say, well, I mean, it's, 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 it's a thousand times better, but this is 10 times better than what I need for the music that I listen to in this space. So there's no way to predict if this is really going to become the next iPod or the next iPod hi-fi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. There's a big difference. Yeah, and <laughs> Apple is very candid. Like when they positioned it, they said, we have a lot of uh, smart speakers that aren't very good speakers and a lot of good speakers that aren't very smart. And we want to make something that sort of meets those in the middle. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting. Uh, they've, fa they've found a new product category for themselves. Um, that combine some of their their real skills. Um, yeah, yeah, it's interesting. I, 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 this, this this occurred to me the other day that Apple this Apple very recently came up with two uh, devices that made me super excited about the Apple again. I mean, like as in Mac one twenty eight, the very first days excited. The iPod, uh, iPod, and iPhone and iPad first days excited, and they are the AirPods and they are the HomePod. Because they are such a, you can't think if you could, you would be able to tell instantly 
by the look of it and also by the attitude, the, the, the mindset that went into it, this is definitely an Apple product. No other company could do this or execute this as well as hopefully they're going to do the, iP uh, the other HomePod. But the AirPods, every detail of it is just brilliant. So it's, it's exciting to see Apple finding its smile, so to speak. If we, if we were talking earlier about how Apple is not showing any visible, really, excuse me, to my point of view, uh, any really visible enthusiasm for Mac, it is, I think they're, they're showing even more excitement about uh, speaker technology than they are in iOS right now. Yeah. It's really interesting. Um, and, and as Apple has proven with the, uh, the headphones for the iPhone, nobody really cares about quality anymore. The, the <laughs> I mean, seriously, there's oh. stereo files, there are audio <laughs> files out there, and, and <clears throat> they're never going to buy this. But for the vast majority of people, this is fine. People like, yeah, yeah. for crying out loud, how many Bose Soundwave radios were sold? And Beats headphones. <laughs> and Beats head. I mean, we know yeah. people don't really care that much about it. If it's it's good enough, it's it sounds good. Oh, it sounds good. They're they're happy. It's got some boom and bass. Yeah, it's got boom and bass, right? <laughs> Uh, they're happy. So, um, but the question is, you know, you can get better speakers for even for less money, but without any smarts. Yeah. How important is the smarts and how well can Apple execute the smarts? And it sounds like, I don't know, very interesting. And it's an ecosystem play because especially with iOS 11, everything is just going to auto set up and auto share credentials and you'll bring it home, you'll plug it in and it'll just work with all your stuff. Yeah. And that's a compelling argument for people who who don't find technology that addressable. Yeah. And I, I hope, and I hope that it shows the same flexibility as they've shown with the AirPods, where I, I, I was in love with my AirPods before I even introduced it to any iOS device. I was using it just with my, just as an, a pair of, uh, of, of Android phone headphones, they, earbuds. They were really, really good. Uh, so, so long as they maintain that, if so, I, I think I'm less impressed with Apple when they make a device that shows them, we can make really, really great hardware that works awesomely, so long as we can absolutely predict and control everything that right. ever happens with this ever. Uh, so, so long as they have that same attitude where I, I would love to see a, a future update where it can actually accept Bluetooth because that's that would add a lot of value to this uh, to this device for people who buy it. But then a, a year and three months later, they still love it. But their the way that they use speakers has changed. And, oh, my God, if this thing had Bluetooth or even just a simple audio in, how much more could I use this? But I can't because they're they a cross platform they family. So how so you said it's not cross platform. What does that mean? Is, is, is it, it not it Bluetooth? Only uses it it, it has Apple Music directly. It can do it can stream Apple Music directly from your account from the cloud, and it has App, um, AirPlay 2 support. So it doesn't do direct. Okay, so Apple if I have Google Music, there's no way for me to play. You can AirPlay it from an iOS device AirPlay. that has Google Spotify, Music. Spotify, I could AirPlay. And to Andy's point, that is if you're in a cross-device household where maybe you have an iPhone and your wife has an Android or your child has uh, you know, a PC or something and you want everyone to use it, there's no word on that yet. Like Andy, I really hope they add it. They did add it to the, home, to the AirPods, so there's, you know, there's reason to be hopeful, but they weren't talking about it at least yet. That, so that would be, I mean, it's really made for people who are in the Apple ecosystem then. Yeah. Okay, and it's not available until December, so again, like the iMac Pro, you can, you can hold and it And only off. in three unilingual English countries at launch. Oh, interesting. Why is it not available till December? That seems like an it's easy not, it's product. It's not finished. <laughs> What's so hard it's about it? not finished yet. It's a speaker. I mean, it's, it's and I, I think there's also some hesitation because with AirPods, it was, you know, it, it was announced and then it was delayed and it was still hard to find. And I think Apple doesn't want to repeat of that, which is why they're tightly controlling where it's going to ship and what it's expected of yeah. it at launch. Huh. All right. There is a rumor <laughs> that I think you probably want to debunk, but we'll talk about that in just a second. And more Apple news. Renee Ritchie from iMore.com. Andy Anako from the Chicago Sun times oops <laughs> well before we move on leo can we like we, we got ar kit pretty right on a couple oh, weeks before oh WBC. let's talk about yeah well, no yeah. let's i gotta take a break but let's talk about when yeah, we okay. come back because that's a, another a good point though uh there's a lot of evidence from wwdc that apple in fact some people are saying apple's going to skip generations and going to be the next big thing in ar maybe maybe i will be taking scoble to dinner in paris in december i hope not <laughs> No clear iPhone, you're safe. <laughs> yeah, I think he made a mistake saying clear iPhone. He should have yes. doubled down on the AR thing. Yes. Uh, but not the clear. Well, let's talk about what is, what is Apple. What did we learn about Apple and AR uh, two weeks ago? And I'm sorry again. Uh, Leo's just catching up. I feel like Rip Van Winkle. We've seen the demos now, though. It's new because people are actually playing. Well, there is, and there's more information. Yeah, there's yeah. more information. So that's good. Our show today brought to you by uh, a really great new travel site. Highly recommend. From the guy who created uh, Priceline. I hesitate saying that because 
uh, it's not like Priceline at all. But Jay Walker is a brilliant guy. He's very uh, great entrepreneur, serial entrepreneur. And he saw an opportunity in business travel to create a site that solves a problem for companies like mine, any small to medium business that doesn't have a travel bureau. And when I worked at the big company like Ziff Davis, you you were going to do employee, you know, if you're going to go to Comdex or whatever, you'd call the travel department. They booked the flight. They had pre-negotiated deals with hotels. I remember we had to stay at the MGM Grand for years because they had like a 10-year deal with the MGM Grand in Vegas. Then they had pre-negotiated airline deals. And so they would just do it all for you. And it was great. But if you're a small business, you don't have that clout. You don't have the travel department. And and you got to do it all on your own. I got a great way to do it. It's called Upside. Upside.com. They bundle flights and hotels together because if you're doing business travel, you need to, you know, your business trip, you need a hotel too, right? So where you say is where you're flying from, in my case, San Francisco. And let's go to, let's go to New York, New York. And I think I want to take a trip, uh, let's say... Uh, day after the 4th of July. And I'm going to stay through a Saturday. You can choose your cabin class. You can choose uh, your business purpose, work. Uh, you can decide whether you want to make it refundable. That's it. It's very simple. It's very simple. Uh, now let's press get started. Now what it's going to do is not going to offer you, as some of the other sites do, a thousand choices. It's got, it's going to give you the first six best choices for what you want to do with the best prices. And if you want more, you can click again and again and again and go to more. But really the idea is to make this as easy as possible for you. So, I mean, I've got, this is hotel and airfare. I've got, this is good. I love Virgin America. Times look good. Uh, shall I, shall I pick this flight? Let's, let's see. Um, and by the way, notice, you know, everything There's no surprise. Let's, so let's select the flight. Now they're going to bundle a hotel in with it. And you're going to see what the state, what the, what the savings is, is just remarkable, but there's more. All right. Now I am going to be picky because I know where I like to stay in uh, New York. Ooh, this looks good. A little, uh, let's go a little downtown four star hotel. All right, now normally that'd be seven or eight hundred bucks. Uh, they've got a great deal for you. Airfare total if booked separately nine ninety, so your company saves forty bucks. But look at this: you also get a gift card, and if you're booking for your company and you own the company, which is what I always do, I apply the gift card to the price of the package. Then they even say more: look, you save even more money. Get a seventy dollar gift card if you stay at the New York Jolly Madison. Towers. Don't I don't know where that is, but you see the deal. Now, let me tell you a little bit about this gift card. Your gift card it comes from one of uh, I think they have fifty different vendors, including you know Amazon, um, you know all the people that you know and love. Target. So you're going to get a real gift card. You're going to get it by email in seventy two hours. It's yours. Your company gets the deal on the on the airfare and the hotel. You get a little side benefits that's their incentive for you to do it and as again if i'm buying for myself and my company i just apply the price of the gift card and i save even more money which is awesome now we've got a deal for you that by the way that took me a couple of minutes that's all it's very fast and it's flexible you save immediately you receive gift cards it is the easiest way to do business travel and if you use the offer code mac break right now you'll get a guaranteed minimum $100 gift card on your very first trip. Now, that is a good deal. Upside.com. There is a minimum purchase required. See the site for complete details. This is the best way. From now on, it's the only way we do our uh, business travel booking. And whether you're an employee or an owner, it's how you should be doing your booking. And by the way, if you're not the owner, those gift cards, that really is a nice little perk for the employee. Upside.com. We thank them so much. Their support for Mac Break Weekly. And don't forget the offer code Mac Break. Andy Nako, did we get him back? We had a little disconnect. Hi, Andy. Sorry All about right. that. My my Mac's just absolutely crashed. Oh. <laughs> In the middle of speaking, he just went beep. That's like, a weird bye. thing when that. You had heard what you said about iPad and it got upset. Remember, it yeah. used to it, computers and everything used to crash all the time. Yes. And now it's no. so rare that you. It's like what? It crashed. When's the last time you saw a kernel? Like yeah, kernel panic. Yeah. Yeah. We've gotten a lot more. Uh, Reliable. But we, we forget about that. All right, let's talk about augmented reality because a lot of conversation about what Apple implied. Well, for instance, uh, Apple just created and killed, according to TechCrunch, a generation of AR businesses. 
Um, <laughs> tell me, so what did Apple announce and what are we projecting? What are we, like for instance, we're projecting because of the extra power in the new iPad Pro, there's going to be AR capabilities coming in the future. I mean, they showed it off, so they introduced... Yeah, go ahead, Annie. Oh, just 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 quickly that uh, it's a great headline because uh, AR, augmented reality used to be something that you ha you really had to roll yourself and it was exotic technology. You had to either be someone or hire someone who knew how to do all of the GPU stuff, all the graphic stuff, all the uh, tracking stuff just to get anything going on AR. And then Apple comes along and says that we will we, AR kit. Uh, will tell you that there is a flat surface where that flat surface is. It will tell you, it knows where the light source is. Uh, it knows where what the user is doing with this phone. So really, to a, to a certain extent, all you have to do is give us a 3D model of something, point us to the what surface it needs to be on. We will not only place it there to, so it looks like it's on that surface, be it a table, the floor, a, a, piece, of, a, piece, of, a piece of road, but we will also make sure it matches the lighting and it's properly scaled for wow. what is around it. So you and don't so, have to do anything. This is all a library built into the... Uh iOS. Yeah. It's, it's not as easy. It's not as easy as click and drag, but it means that so much of your work has been done, which is why the the first episode of uh, 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 Planet of the Apps that I saw was hysterically funny. This is the one where people are pitching their brilliant app for for investors, and they, this whole thing is we spent so much time and money and effort developing an AR system that nobody else has. That and now we can sell this to like IKEA if IKEA wants to ha write an app that has a, puts a piece of furniture in someone's home. They can actually they'll go to us for the technology because our technology is so expensive and so horrible, horribly complicated, and we'll do it so easily. It's that no, there is AR kit, and IKEA's own in-house people can probably do that themselves now. Yeah, uh, so uh, Matthew why, Panzerino on TechCrunch said that Pear, which was the app that you saw on uh, Planet of the Apps inaugural episode, has been Sherlocked. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> Whoops. Already. I don't want to. I don't want to laugh because it's horrible news no, for any developer. It's bad news. But it's like, yeah. oh my god! I, I wonder if they chose this as the first episode to to distribute because they knew that. Oh, by the way, we 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 got to look at the at the keynote rehearsal and this guy's life is going to get a lot different. <laughs> uh, that's yeah, so no. Scary. I mean, it's it's super interesting. Like a couple of years ago, Apple acquired a company. I think it's called Mateo or Mail. It was, it was TechCrunch reported on at the time, right. and they had a, was a really user friendly or forward friendly. API and Apple acquired them and they acquired some other companies and they've been working on this for a while. Uh, and it has a couple of really interesting things going for it. Like Andy said, it 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 just does a lot of the hard stuff. We saw a demo where well, we played uh, Star Wars Hollow Chess with Jabba the Hutt, which is lucky because Chewbacca can pull your arms off his arms are <laughs> too short. Do not um, beat the Wookiee. But it's great. <laughs> and you could put like a, a lamp on the table, a chair on the ground, and a, t a coffee cup on the table and move the iPad around. And it, it knows what services to stick those to. And as you move the coffee cup around, it does the scaling for it. And we put it next to a cup. And for a second, the guy's like, ah, I forgot which one was real. And then try to move both of them. <laughs> uh, and it worked really, really well. And you really do see the power of these new iPads behind it. Um, but what's cool is like you can see Tim Cook's excitement about it. Like he, he, he has not been able to help himself talking about how cool uh, AR technology is and, and where it can be everywhere. Uh, but what was really impressive too is they showed like sort of exactly like we, we predicted on, on Mac Break Weekly a few weeks ago. The Poke even something as simple as a Pokemon Go demo, it just it makes the game better. And they don't have to switch over to Apple Technologies to Metal or to AR Kit to do it because Unity will do that for them. So it'll just make the experience of playing AR games on iOS better. You know, I don't want to use it for free term because it's abused, but technically right. for free for a lot of developers. And it'll it'll be in IKEA and it'll be in Pokemon Go and it'll be in all these apps. And it'll be great for education where you can you know hold it up in the classroom and for tech support where you hold it up and you know which exact button to press to reboot that server when no one else is around. And I'm super excited about it as well. Panzerino's quote. From his article on TechCrunch, Apple just built the AR industry's shovel. Now all you have to do is decide where to dig. Yeah, um, that that's, that's what pretty makes it so exciting. Yeah. But so let, are people let, adopping let it already? Uh, besides IKEA, I mean IKEA did, but who I mean, is this like? Are we going to see a million apps in five minutes? Uh, uh, well, when, when iOS 11. <laughs> oh, you use iOS million, 11. We're going to see a million Pokemon clones in five minutes. The first the minute that iOS yeah, 11 right. ships, but after but after Patty, that, I'll look. At, I'm looking for the person who just has this brilliant idea. They're they're a brilliant man or woman. They just aren't brilliant about AR. But now Apple has made them AR brilliant. And so if they want to make this app that will put hang a mural anywhere you want it to go, uh, or just going to my my favorite my favorite conjecture is the idea of walking through London and saying going through the Tower of London and saying well or if you turn on this AR app 
where we will put you where you are standing right now the way it would have been when it was an active prison for upscale <laughs> British British royalty and just turn around and look at nope that that's new oh wow oh my god there's like lions and bears and a, and a duck over there that in cages what's that all about just the idea that things that can be done with someone's imagination and Apple will bring the API for, for Here's the a guy named Cody Brown made a, a demo with AR kit and uh Created. Uh, this is uh, Widowmaker, one of the characters from Overwatch, in his house, including, <laughs> by the way, fog and lighting effects. Uh, that's terrifying. Uh, well, you've and seen, he, like, he, on the Vive, Leo, they have people who've just used the Unity or the 3D yeah, this uh, is Unity. Unreal Engine to make yeah. amazing games on the Vive, like like a, a lightsaber simulator. Just one person made it, or that I forget the name of that Dungeon and Dragons game, but they're amazing, and because of the tools, they can make these games. And this this is giving them the tools. Imagine playing Overwatch in your room. Terrifying. Um, I mean, I'm not excited by this. This is kind of amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, at, so as have you played? I mean, uh, how, how hard is this to to work with? Is it? It's in Sprint Playground. It's, sorry, it's in uh, Swift Playground. It is. So we can try yeah. it. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. So you, you, yeah, which I think is a great move by Apple to get people of all ages just thinking of AR. And I think I was also really canny of uh, Tim Cook a while ago, where he sort of implied that for Apple, AR was not a specific product. It wasn't a set of goggles or spectacles yeah. or anything else. It was what was going to be a pervasive technology throughout all their product lines. And this, this is a huge first step in that direction. Yeah. yeah. And what a great. It probably wasn't a. It was too in the cards too long to be a response to anything. But what a great bookend response to the Google I.O. keynote in which they were showing a, a brilliant stuff that Google's doing with augmented reality but it's all about and when people buy these devices when people buy this special phone with these special sensors and when when this device which is not available to consumers yet but it's in developers hands Apple has said you know what the you know the device you're using to watch this keynote right now yeah. Well, in six months, it will be your AR device. You already own it. Just you might want to delete a couple of apps first, but if it's if you're taking too much space, but you're good. I think Sco that Scoble was right. Maybe this is a very interesting. It's not what we thought. What it's what it is, yeah. and it's very smart. Is it enables developers, all of whom are uh, you know want to try this. So the guy who did that uh, Overwatch uh, demo, Cody Brown, is a founder of a virtual reality production studio called IRL. Here's the quote from Motherboard: "The most impressive aspect." of AR kit is it tends to just work. Other AR software often requires some sort of physical tracking mechanism like a QR code. You know, you have to p point your camera yeah. at something, which inevitably becomes a major piece of friction if you're trying to get anyone to use this stuff. Another incredible aspect of AR kit is how it handles lighting adjustments in real time. I can only imagine the math and magic underneath this tech to make it work. Here's a, a Kyle uh, Russell uh, tw tweeted uh, just a... a, a a picture of a jet on an iPad, but he shows you how the jet maintains its positioning even as you move around it. You can walk around the object. It's pretty darn smart. And the fact that these guys are making these demos already is very interesting. So uh, this makes the iPad particularly, I think less so the iPhone, but makes, but certainly the iPhone. But but this makes iOS very intriguing, yeah. right? And it's sort of the democratization yeah. of technology that Apple has been involved with, you know, at least you know since Steve Jobs started the company, where now AR is accessible to you know people who have hundreds of millions of devices, and even things like Core ML, which sounds all, uh, which sounds like a niche thing, they made it open so you can pull in models from any source, and and it, they'll just all convert to Open ML, and that will make. Uh, machine learning more accessible to everybody. And there were a series of technologies they sort of announced in rapid fire, Craig Federici fashion that could be transformative on their own, but when put together, I mean, how long is it until that airplane is using machine learning to fly around that room right. without hitting objects? Right. It's, it's going to be great. And what's what's really exciting is, unlike Google's Project Tango, you you already have the hardware yeah. that you need. It's been built in. I pres Now, will the iPhone 7 uh, have enough horsepower or we're going to have to wait for the next iPhone? It's an A10, so it's the same horsepower that's in that iPad. Um, yeah, and what's what's super smart about this is if Apple ever does get into AR uh, hardware, they will have had all this content built out for them on their platform already. Brilliant, right? Don't do the hardware. Yeah, uh, just make it possible for soft for developers to do it. Um, wow! You, 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 yeah, you achieve exciting. you you achieve a new level of power and and uh, and destiny when you decide to let go of control of your own platform and you say we're going to let the entire world discover the awesome of a tool we're not going to build something and ask people to buy it and support it and this is very much uh, that kind of a thing 
this is Sean O'Kane who collated a bunch of videos and GIFs. This is a uh, iPhone-based AR fidget spinner that's on <laughs> that looks like it's on your table. Is it as stress-reducing as a real thing, though? <laughs> no, probably not, but that's a pretty good demo. I yeah. mean, if you've played with a uh, previous AR, even Pokemon Go, you realize it, they don't have that kind of... They don't feel stable in the environment as yes. you move this stuff around. This is stuff is rock, rock solid. The future... This is the future of business graphics. Put a barcode, float a barcode over your desk. This is from A Zam Sharp. Was this shown at WWDC? This, by the way, sixty yeah. frames a second. Yes. Yeah. No, it's great. And think about your first day at a new company. Like if your first day at the Apple AC2 campus, you have no idea where to go. You hold up your iPhone, and little AR AR assistant walks you right to your desk. I mean, it's just so many things that this would be interesting for. Brandon Sidebottom doodling with a new AR kit. He says. If you want to vandalize without the messy consequences, start spray painting your kid. <laughs> and you put in AirPods and suddenly you have AR audio as well oh, as video. I mean, this is very intriguing. I have to say I was skeptical about what Apple would do, but this is exactly the right way to do it. Uh, and, and, and then they own it, by the way, because you have to have an Apple device to do this. It's Krieger's wife. <laughs> uh, virtual pets. Look at that. Yeah. Have a dog in your house. Um, wow. Okay, so I might... VR, they announced support for both. Was, I might yeah, just buy a Scoble dinner just because I'm so impressed by this. <laughs> it's not what <laughs> he said. It's not exactly a clear iPhone, although if you think about it, if you get the screen big enough... Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's certainly... I think... So the uses are going to vary. An iPhone, sure, for navigation, but an iPad is going to be pretty interesting. Uh, because workout apps because you have to hold it up while you're doing the workout so then you get the arms going yeah. too yeah here's a BB-8 in your uh, kitchen look at that so great and it really look at the shadow uh, yeah. look at how well it adheres to the floor um, yeah this is this is exact. scaling as well just yeah. that, that just that is simple is, is brilliant enough the idea that it's it's the right size when you get near it, it everything is just scaling properly wow. that is nice and as you fidget with the iPad it's staying rock solid right so do you think this is technology Apple acquired, uh, developed in-house? Yeah. Both? Uh, both, yeah. From a few years ago, and then they added its own Elfin Magic Act. Access to the burritos in the, in the Apple commissary has its own sort of gamma ray <laughs> effect on an, an, a good acquired uh, company. Here's uh, Adam uh, Deborah Shenny. Shen sorry, Adam. He, uh, he took the map of his bike ride and has superimposed it on his coffee table with uh, the terrain and everything. Um, that's Unity plus AR yeah. Kit plus Mapbox plus Strava. Okay, yeah. think, okay, think, I'm think, sold. I, and and education, this is going to be so brilliant. Yeah. You you think about the ways that when when we were growing up, we had calculators, but we didn't really have data visualization easily on the computers that we had back then. And now, when you're learning math, you don't just understand trigonometry; you understand how cosines and all those functions work in 3D space and 4D space just by playing with them as graphical objects. Now, imagine when you have the ability to not just understand here is a photo of Machu Picchu and here is a photo yeah. of the bottom of the mountain and if you the ability of the kids say okay guess what you're in a helicopter and you are here are the controls of the helicopter and here's machu picchu we'll be back in a half hour to discuss everything that you've seen that's it really just gets you everybody excited and if it doesn't check your pulse man yeah wow uh really it's really kind of amazing it was um, a good dub w yeah <laughs> Yeah. Well, I'm sorry I missed those particular uh And demos. by the way, they threw out VR and they threw out, you know, H.265 and HDR and a whole bunch of other stuff just as an aside. Yeah. Um I did a um I did a number of 360 videos with the Samsung Gear camera. I think you liked I think I remember you liked that uh Andy. Yep. Yeah. I recommended it a couple weeks ago, as a matter of yeah. fact. Yeah. And um there's one of the sun rising uh over Machu Picchu. Wow. Uh, and it's it does really make you think. This is this is an opportunity to share experiences in a much more experiential way. Um, and it was easy, right? I just put the thing, yeah. <laughs> and it did a time lapse, uh, and there and there it is. So, 
That's a, that's that's the power of simplicity. You wouldn't you wouldn't have it, it, you had the ability through an, any number of downloadable apps to shoot a 360 degree photo, photosphere from that spot if you really really wanted to do it. But when you have a device in your pocket that you remember that oh it's about the size of half a candy bar. It, yes, it is worth 20 seconds of my life to lift it up and do this. Like and uh, that's when you start taking 360 degree videos everywhere. Similar, same with this. That's when you you have an idea for, hey, you know what? This this would really be enhanced with AR, but I don't want to I don't want to spend a year figuring out how to do this. But I will spend the next couple of weekends playing around <laughs> in playgrounds to see how hard it is to do. Realize it's really not that hard, and then add that to the app. That's you make something easy. You make you really uh, light up someone's creativity, and that's how you make technology better. Yeah. Um. Very exciting. Yep. Okay. Rumor, you can just you can completely debunk this in one word, Renee. Sure. Google will find a new home on iOS this fall, and instead of Siri, you'll find the Google Assistant. True or false? I mean, if if Apple makes a Siri Kit extension for other assistants, and then Alexa and Google and everybody can play with it, I think you know that 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 that. I can't see Apple giving up on yeah, there. but no. No, there, you can no. Yeah, you, it, 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 on a platform where you can't even say, "Oh, by the way, I have this other." Nope, nope. <laughs> well, what if I want to nope. open a graphic and stuff? Nope, nope. <laughs> Remember, iMessage for uh, Android was a rumor last year, so these things come and go. Oh, I wish that rumor had come true. That's well, that, you got iMessage on the web, so well, not yeah. on the web. You got you got iCloud for iMessage, so yeah. again, baby steps. No, I don't. I think Apple's smart. Just lock everybody into the goddamn Apple operating system. What the hell, right? <laughs> That is the definition of a backhanded compliment. I think they're very, very smart to put an extra level of iron around the handcuffs they've already put. Let's lock hey, those they get the credit and they get the blame. There's, there's nowhere else to go with that. Lock them all maybe, in. maybe if they have their boot heel on their necks, they won't even bother to struggle anymore, and they'll be so much happier. Yeah. Here's the. Uh, took me a while. Here's the uh, the VR. I'll skip ahead here. Uh, of, now, so the best way to do this would be to put on a, a VR visor. See, Apple still doesn't have anything like that, right? And then, yeah, and then look around. Yeah, for the Vive now. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah. So you can look around. So, But but it's also good enough for just the, the phone-based viewers to stand in one place yeah. and just be walking around. And yeah. That's true. That's it's true. it's amazing how the, the people who, people who can't, can't imagine themselves using AR, download one of these apps and try them out. You'll be surprised at how quickly... You're you're in your office or you're in your living room, and but suddenly you are just like looking, just like you do when you're your own tourist. You spend a lot of your time, unfortunately, looking at some of the most brilliant landscapes through the screen of your phone. Anyway, but the, then you're transported to this place when you have the freedom to suddenly. I wonder what I wonder what the, the ceiling inside the Lincoln Memorial looks like because no one no one takes a picture of the ceiling. But it occurs to you to look up and say, "Oh my God, there's this really nice arrangement of sky." Oh, yeah. now I know why there's it's always there is always this light that's hitting the top of Abe Lincoln's head. That's how they right. did that. And I mean, this is a non-trivial thing to get up into the Andes and see this yes. and. Mm, most of the time, it's only about one day in five you get a clear day like this. So this is a real privilege. So the ability to share it, it's paused here, but the ability to share it, the sun comes up and then you see the light from the sun slowly fill yeah. in the mountain and fill in the uh, the the site is pretty... I was thrilled to be able to share this. I wish I'd found a better spot to take it, though. I didn't realize... you can't, That's one thing. You can't really be sure what it's going to look like until it happens nevertheless i mean this is this is a great way to share this experience and you can look around you can see what i was yeah. doing while, while while the sun was coming out. so one of us will go to all the every awesome place we'll just send back 360 so. video for the rest of us i yeah. think so we'll i took uh, i took 360 video of uh riding in a uh a zodiac uh wow. in the galapagos so you know you don't have to students i mean obviously better to go to the galapagos better much better but uh, there's an opportunity here to have experiences in a kind of a very dynamic way um that's pretty exciting however i think augmented reality is really ex more exciting in the long yeah. run and more useful yeah. people always think about something strapped to your head and interfering with what you're seeing they don't think about taking out the getting off at a subway stop taking out a phone and seeing a big yellow brick road literally a yellow brick road going down 23rd street up fifth avenue with a big arrow saying here is where you need to go here's where your meeting is or here's where that restaurant is yeah. and yeah. once you and get again, them to AirPods. understand that yeah 
It's just some people aren't visual. Some people are audio. I like the audio thing, effects. and nobody's really licked that very well. Uh, that's been always a challenge, so that's going to be yeah. exciting to hear that coming through the iPods. AirPods, rather. Uh, all right. What else? Did I, did, uh, every, anything else to cover um, before we News wise there's the leak of the leakers. That was, that was hugely amusing. The leak of the leakers. You there's a leak about the leak meeting. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I, I bookmarked that, but remind me again. Uh, so, this, is, um, this is Apple... Apple, this is an insight into Apple's secrecy. And to be clear, they've been having these meetings for these meetings for a while. These are not new. It just this is the first time one of these meetings actually leaked, and it's it looks like a recent meeting. Yeah. Uh, and this is just like Apple continuing to try to buckle down on leaks coming from the company. But it discloses several interesting things, like that they found a leak within iTunes, and they found a leak within uh, the Apple the Apple online organization that they managed to plug last year. And when you look about what leaked this year versus previous years, uh, it, it's apparent that some things, you know, some things are still coming out of the supply chain. We're still seeing iPhone 8 things, but a, a large amount of software stuff didn't leak this year that did leak last year. Right. So, um, but the, they were throwing shade too. Like it's like uh, the, the guy is saying, oh, even Gruber is telling people that people can't get leaks anymore. That's all right. You know, it's, it's just the whole thing was very, <laughs> was very fun to me. Uh, and they're using uh, like NSA, former NSA people. I mean, they're really, yeah. I, my tweet this morning, uh, and I didn't get a chance to listen to the recording, but my tweet this morning was uh, Steve Jobs' paranoia lives on. But <laughs> so do you think it really is a benefit to Apple to be this, Paranoid and this secretive. Uh, I, I would say so. I, I would say so about contr about information getting out that is untimely, that is incorrect, that is inaccurate, that reflects a stage of their thinking that is still ongoing. I think that's they're very much in the right to do that. I do think they should be more open. I think they can solve a lot of this by simply deciding that it's okay if a year from now we show you here's something we're thinking about right now or here's where we are on this. I think that would have put, for instance, a lot of people's worries about the Mac at rest if they knew before having the summit of the five uh, of, of five pundits saying, okay, we we are understanding that we probably need to take a look at the Mac Pro. We are working on this. Please don't go out to the hardware hangs and start buying stuff so you can build your own Mac Pro right now. We are built. We're working on it. But yeah, to, you, you don't want people if, if you think about the things that happen in your own office that out of context and uh, not just explain that this is just something that I was thinking about doing or thinking about writing. This is not part of the structure of the company. And if someone decides they want to leak this out to tell everybody that uh, that uh, Apple is, plan is, is putting a month, seriously thinking about a helicopter with lawn darts on it like they're not they were just doing a having a, draw, a fun drawing session on the the new thing that they're that you didn't even figure out about come on uh at one point they show a a video uh to the team about leaks and at the end uh the speaker says so you heard tim say we have one more thing so what is that one more thing surprise and delight surprise and delight when we announce a product to the world that hasn't leaked it's incredibly impactful in a positive way it's our dna it's our brand but when leaks get out that's even more impactful it's a direct hit to all of us so i i haven't listened to it did you listen to the whole thing uh Renee or no I just like again like th th these meetings aren't new I, it was for me it was mostly just the lulls like they, that the, the meeting leaked uh you know the that, leak? that's just funny and by the way own. credit to Joshua Topolsky and his new uh, publication the outline they're the ones who got the leak uh and wrote this article and uh well done um <laughs> you know you, you gotta wonder who leaked it <laughs> it's a little bit weird too I mean like I, like you <laughs> When you look at some of these things, like it's easy to get, well, it's not easy, but like sometimes you get facts, but when you start to analyze them, you can go down the wrong path. Like, uh, I, I, people we've talked about before, like um, Jonathan Zdarsky, yeah, he started deleting his tweets long before Apple. He got really sort of moral issues with Twitter and, oh, interesting. and data retention. Oh, interesting. And he was deleting every tweet he made like five minutes after he made it for a, a while. Uh, and then that was sort of like he just killed his account and he was talking about that. I don't know about publicly, but he yeah. was talking about doing that move for a long time. So you, you can sort of interpret this stuff, but not all of it is going to be accurate. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if the whole uh, recording is available online, but certainly a lot of uh, quotes, pull quotes from it and so forth. Um, and they really believe that. They believe that the ability to come out there and surprise you generates press for them, which is that's like, incredibly valuable. Yeah, and if people know about it. They get like you people leave WWDC or they leave Google I.O. and they go, well, it was boring. Well, if you read the script of the new Star Wars movie, you think the new Star Wars movie was really was boring, too. And that right. hurts. Right, that hurts yeah. the property. That that's why it's it's interesting to see this as part of a leaked inter if it was an, literally an, uh, an internal dialogue that was not meant to be made public because they say that as though they believe it internally. 
which to, to me, it's like making sure that things don't leak out before the press event. That means you get to control the information. You get to control the marketing. You get to have everybody talking about this thing at the same time with the same data points and at the time that is most advantageous for it to happen for you when you're trying yes. to get sell people this thing. If it's like, we just want people to be delighted, which is, okay, look, I, I'm not seven years old. You're not my parents, and it's not Christmas morning, okay? I'm, I, I've got $2,000 that I have to budget for a major purchase, and it will help me to wait and not buy this thing today and be angry with myself three months from now if I know that three months from now you are you might be thinking of shipping something, even if you're not giving it a ship date, even if you're just saying that here is a direction we're considering for the Apple Pencil or for the iPad or for the Mac – it will give me that faith to say, you know what, I will do without for three or four months just in case because I know that you've got that the fall is coming and there might be something interesting coming out. But if you decided that we just want you to be – to pa we we want Andy to pad downstairs in his little footy pajamas and see Santa Claus, it's like – I I have I own no footy pajamas. I'm not nearly as adorable when I was seven. I wasn't even very cute back then. I'm just somebody who wants to get value for money and please just cut the BS. Okay, and I have to acknowledge because, like, that we are on the we're in the opposition. We're the ones who are trying to find out this information. And I so I understand I'm, I'm the not me. I don't care. I understand the business value of Apple not having leaks. Um yeah. but I also think that there there's a downside to too much paranoia and too much closedness that I think the best way to do this is to control communications. And I think Apple maybe errs on the side of total silence where it would be really more valuable. And maybe they're changing a little bit because I think of late they've been a little bit more forthright. Yeah, Tim, this year even more than, yeah. this was even a newer, yeah. newer Apple than before. Yeah, but so I, I, like, tell us Apple enough, tell us a little bit. And it's our job. I mean, really, I think our job is to tell consumers whether they should wait or whether they shouldn't wait. And I you know, I understand that it's better for Apple if it's a surprise for everybody, but we're not here to make Apple's business better. We're better we're here to represent consumers. No, totally. And I think that everyone sort of knows there's gonna be a new iPhone every fall. But while you were gone, Leo, Tim Cook went on a Bloomberg interview and said that they're working on autonomous technology. Right. And even a year ago, Steve Dowling would never have done across that. that table yeah. so fast. Yeah. Like so fast. Yeah. And the the entire dub dub was was done in a in a, a totally different way. But even from like my perspective I've had people complain about Apple PR and Apple marketing, uh, and I've had to deal with all the companies now, and they're just so organized and so brief. And I know there was a kerfuffle about how how technically savvy their marketing team was earlier in the week, but I've thrown them all manner of oddball, curveball, technical questions that you know salesy marketing people, which we've all met at other companies, would panic would instantly be deer in the headlights and they don't flinch they just answer like when you start asking them about apfs on the mac the marketing people don't flinch they know every inch of that That's stack good. Uh, yeah. And that takes sort of a lot of time and preparation and focus on their part. And I can understand when they sort of have these things thrown at them out of sorts. They, it, it's just they have – there's advantages and disadvantages to their approach. And one of the advantages is they're super well prepared. There's advantages they're not prepared when things don't go the way they plan them. Right. So to, to, uh, some, uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes I, fe I feel like I'm, uh, I'm the John Lennon to, uh, to Renee's Paul McCartney. It's not a bad, uh, not a only, bad only, team. Only, only, I mean only that's good. Only in the sense – Would we wear that the sense that, <laughs> Only in the sense that I, I, when, I hear Renee say, when I hear Renee singing, it's getting better all the time. Give me that pencil. It, it can't, can't get much worse. Us. Yeah, uh, but just just for added perspective, yeah, uh, Apple's Apple's uh, marketing people are really really on the ball. They're very, they're a lot more helpful. Uh, they're not they're rarely will let you go on the record with what you talk to them about, but they will tr try really really hard to give you the information you want. To that uh, that said. Other companies that are as uh, as big as Apple, uh, when I deal with them, it's like I don't know when I connect you with an engineer, and we'll have a conference. We'll have a conference call with like two different engineers, and I will get stuff that I could actually use outside of the conversation. So it's it's every single company has to figure out the best way to do it. I think that Apple really likes to maintain a lot of control. I really when we're talking about the con control of leaks, I think that is part of their institutional memory that. Things do not yes. happen well if we can't if we don't if we can't at least we're not at least aware of what's going on around us, uh, and that can be both good and bad. I I do have to say so what so <clears throat> I loved it we had Adam Engst from Tidbits on he said we well, don't do rumors we don't do leaks uh, and there and of course with a with a weekly publication in his case or a weekly show like ours there's not often enough Mac news and Apple news to talk about without having throwing some some rumors in. Um, and but I also I, I want to uh, I think uh, I, I understand and honor Apple's desire 
for secrecy, but I want to balance that with our uh, mission to help consumers. So what do you think we should do? Should we not mention rumors? Oh, we should totally. Like, so my, my big thing is that once Apple announces it, that's it. It's static. It's frozen in time. We know exactly what it is. I, I like that we discuss the potential, like what Andy wants to see in a home hub before Apple tells us what it is or what you'd like to see. Like you're using the new Samsung phone and what does Apple have to do with the iPhone? And rumors help sort of inform that. And sometimes blowback from rumors have effect on product teams. Yeah. And I think it's an important part of the discussion. As much as Apple hates it, it's, it's a part of the reality we all live in. And again, you can go to a movie site and read spoilers about Star Wars if you choose to. I, I would love point. that yeah. readers were adult about it and didn't say, oh, boring, because I read it before, because that always bums me out. But I, I love that we that right now the imagination is a limit about iPhone 8. We can talk about wireless, like total distance charging and infinity displays and all these things because Apple hasn't made it real yet. And the minute they do, that all ends. So I, I would not give this up for the world. I, I do like speculating. It's um, but uh, then we have, I mean, there's rumors galore in today's uh, rundown about the iPhone 8 and there's cases and there's also, you know, reveals of body shots. And that's one of the things they addressed, by the way, the, in this meeting about leaks, uh, which was, by the way, I should explain, intended for employees, I think, to train them. This is why you don't want to leak. This is why it's really good yeah. for us and good for the company. If you keep your mouth shut, if you're a good employee and you're a smart employee, you won't be talking about this stuff. Yeah. But uh, but I think but uh, at the same so there are a lot and they talk about the supply chain which is much more difficult to control but all the things they're doing they got moles all sorts of stuff uh, but I don't want to be complicit in this I mean well, a lot of these rumors like the rumor I mentioned it, it that was there's just logical. yeah. Like we thought, uh, uh, what would Apple do if they wanted to announce AR? That's fine. That's to be different, exactly right? right? That's not. Yeah, that's, I think I, I, I think rumors rumors are useful if we don't bring it into the context of if we talk about well, if Apple, if if what 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 why is that why is AR important and what would be valuable and what would be nonsense and why are people thinking right. about this? It's right. also useful if someone the number of times that any of us in this conversation are asked, hey, I, I know I'm going to need to buy I'm going to need to buy a new MacBook sometime in the next year and a half. Should I? But it would be great if I had it for November. Should I wait? until next year and sometimes that that becomes uh, that becomes an important part of the conversation but rumors are always just rumors the other thing you have to be aware of that in my experience very few people uh, will leak something to you simply because they believe that information yeah. wants to be free they usually have some kind of an ulterior motive you cannot I, I will not share a rumor until I know exactly why this person told me that if, right. if someone told me something without the the bond of this goes no farther than this conversation in any context. I have to I have to dig and figure out why did this person tell me this thing they're not supposed to tell me. Uh, and sometimes when I find when, I, when I'm tracking down a rumor that was really great that someone else published, I will track it down and find out that oh, his source was actually inside the company that is saying that it doesn't comment on sources because they. <laughs> Uh, because they, it was very, it would been, it was very, very advantageous for them to have the news cycle at that point in time, and so they, there was an authorized leak of information to make sure that they got a number of conversations on that Tuesday of that week of that year. So that's why it's very, very dangerous to be really, really to get interested in rumors. And also, re remember, that, remember the, the most famous leak of all when uh, uh, an Apple engineer lost <laughs> a pre-release yeah. iPhone. Uh, well, okay. What what did we learn from that? That Apple is going to be introducing a new phone. Okay, we knew they were going to do it anyway. That that phone was going to be of a shape and size. That again, we knew anyway. It was a different design, but it didn't. Really, was it news? Did it actually change anything? We didn't know anything about the context of this. We didn't know if it was a sample a, a sample that was designed to have no ornamentation whatsoever to to, to so it wouldn't call attention to itself right. or was it a sample right. designed to this, this is the thing they they intend to ship and finally the persons who had it they had the biggest scoop ever which is they have an entire radical change to the to the antenna structure of this thing and they missed it they completely missed it. <laughs> even though they had the thing in their hands so that's why rumors are again they're fun it's good for a topic of conversation I, I'm 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 happier talking about it because uh, talking about a rumor in a podcast because we're having conversation and I think people understand the conversation it's really hard for me to write about it though because yeah. then you kind of give it a legitimacy that a rumor does not deserve yeah there's a very big difference between seeing it in print and seeing us just kind of get ga about it. Well, for instance, here's a supply chain rumor that Apple's uh, next phone will have a 3D sensor module in it, kind of like Project Tango. Uh, in brought time sense years ago. I mean, yeah. like again, a lot of this stuff is you look at what Apple's doing and what they need to yeah, go to. Yeah, wouldn't be a surprise, sort of, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, and 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 again, this could be fuel for 
thought about and speculation about well, what would that mean? What would that? How would that change? What would it do? Yeah, how would, how would that affect the R? And that stuff's always and interesting. Also, yeah. Some things don't. Sh like uh, famously, the Sapphire screen was leaked every way, which way, but yeah, Sunday, right. and it didn't ship. Yeah. So like, it's, it, none of this stuff. <laughs> well, and is, I like, think we're always epic. really clear, and I hope that uh, you listening understand that uh, we'll we'll always say it's just a rumor. And I think yeah. we've said again and again, you know, Apple prototypes, many things. You always say that, Renee, which is great, yeah. uh, that this doesn't mean this is a product. This is something they're working on. Who knows what that means? Till Tim or Phil or somebody holds it up on stage, it's not a real Apple product. Yeah. All right, let's take a break. Picks of the week. You ready? Yes, sir. All right. Ready. I'm going to give you my pick. Uh, uh, WordPress. I love my oh. WordPress blog, WordPress.com. I used to, for 10 years, I hosted my own WordPress blog, ran the server, ran the updates, all that stuff. And I got tired of all of that. And I am so happy to be on WordPress.com. They keep it up to date. It's it's WordPress. I know WordPress. It's easy. Uh, I use my blog. I've been blogging, I don't know if you've noticed, a lot more thanks to uh, thanks to WordPress. I use it all the time. Uh, my blog is leolaporte.com. Mate, where's your website? How are, how are you uh, creating a great website? I want you to... Check out WordPress.com. Go to WordPress.com slash MacBreak and find out why 27% of all the sites in the world are powered by WordPress. I see it all the time. Even big name uh, sites like Paul Therott's uh, site powered by WordPress. I just saw the other day Quartz. Remember when Quartz came out? What a big deal. All this fancy new <laughs> interface and how they're really changing the way publications work. It runs on WordPress. <laughs> <laughs> Huh? It's see there it is powered by WordPress.com right at the very bottom. I mean, I will tell you what, WordPress powers twenty seven percent of the websites because they're great. Whether you're looking to create a personal blog, a business site, or both, you're going to make a big impact when you build your business at WordPress.com. Easy for you to set up. Lots of templates, lots of hand holding, great support, really great support. I've been blown away by the support. Oh, just went up. It's twenty eight percent of the web now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one more the power of direct advertising <laughs> wow the power of leo Laporte, it works. ladies and gentlemen 28 percent of the web <laughs> powered by wordpress the other thing i like about wordpress.com is it's you're part of a community immediately i was blown away i have more than half a million people following my blog because it's featured in wordpress.com and because it's part of the wordpress community and they have a front page and there's a follow button and i mean that just is really sweet if you are ready to build a website, I want you to run. Don't walk to wordpress.com slash MacBreak. A uh, couple of reasons you want to use that special address, wordpress.com slash MacBreak. Of course, they'll let them know you heard it here, which is great. We love that. But you'll also get 15% off any new plan purchase. And that could mean a lot of savings. wordpress.com slash MacBreak. Break. Look, I have the front page on my site uh, is a slideshow of some of my favorite pictures. I got to add some pictures from the trip there's paul therott and mary joe foley and uh, and me i just i am so thrilled with Beautiful. wordpress now yeah it, and it made it so easy to do this i was able to wordpress is a standard so there's all sorts of uh, support tools out there and of course they have their great apps as well wordpress.com slash mac break please try it today can and, i ask you something quickly leo before we get to picture yes week? So we didn't get a chance to get your reacts on what Apple did with the Apple Podcast standard or with the podcast oh, uh, format. You know stuff. what? I didn't bring it up because I don't know enough about it. I've saw some uh, um, tweets about it, but I, I, you know, I just got back and I haven't had a chance to read up on it. So they are proposing what? New metadata that will allow you to not like because right now a lot of the podcasts are just you you subscribe to it and you get the most recent episode and this will let you have episodes and seasons marked it'll let you decide whether you want them to be reverse chronological or chronological uh, first season or most recent season it'll also let you do things like uh, designate an episode as a trailer or as a bonus material like after dark episodes versus uh, regular episodes so it's just a way but to make them a little bit more it's iTunes only. No, they made it. It's open, so anyone complements it. And I think a lot of so you think other uh, podcast apps will take advantage. Yeah. See, I've had a problem in the past because one of the reasons podcasts exist is because of something called RSS. What a podcast mm -hmm. really is, there's no such thing as a podcast. It's just audio or video programming that you can that has a feed, an RSS feed you can subscribe to. And it's all because Dave Weiner in 2004 mm -hmm. added a, a little feature to the standard. There is an RSS standard that said 
there's a, a, a binary file enclosure, audio or video enclosure in this feed. So you can use an RSS reader to subscribe to the RSS feed. When there's a new show, you automatically download it. And that's really the fundamental technology that's powered all podcasts. But it is a standard. When Apple's iTunes a couple of years later implemented podcasting, they added new fields. They changed the standard to an Apple-specific standard. We all kind of went along because that was really the only way people could easily listen to podcasts was through iTunes. I'm very nervous about Apple unilaterally setting a standard. Uh, admittedly, everybody could follow it, but it makes me very nervous. There's also audience metrics in there, I think. That's separate. So it, you can log into your iTunes account and you'll be able to get the same kind of analytics that developers get for their apps. So, for example, Leo, you can find out that when I start talking, everyone stops listening and then have a very serious conversation. With yes, it, it makes me very <laughs> nervous because, I, I, you know, I, I never even wanted to call it podcast. I don't want this to live in the Apple universe exclusive of everything else. Well, and some shows have very low Apple like Apple users and some podcasts have very high. Well, Apple and users, people so often look at the uh, the charts on iTunes and say, oh, you're not in the charts anymore. And uh, and it's a, it's a long, boring explanation uh, about how the charts work uh, and the fact that not everybody uses iTunes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it, you, can, you can be, as we are, one of the most listened to podcasts in the world and not be on the charts. That has nothing to do with it. The charts reflect new subscriptions in the past week. Yeah. Uh, in fact, the older the podcast is, the less likely you're going to be on the charts because you're not going to get as many new subscriptions as a brand new podcast. We would always be number one when this show launched. We'd always number one on the chart because everybody subscribes to it and then it would fall off. The episode ranks especially. And so that drives me crazy because nobody understands that. And I don't want to have to explain that every time. And so we get people say, well, you're not, you know, the number one podcast is This American Life. Well, <laughs> yeah, but that's not the most listened to necessarily. So, um, okay, so they're going to add, ah, uh, makes me, makes me nervous. Will we, are you guys supporting it? Of course you are. Uh, uh, so if we're do we do a very traditional podcast that doesn't really need any of these feeds. I think it's, it's mostly for things like serial. Uh, well, remember more, they had an enhanced for a long time. There was this enhanced thing. You could put chapter marks and all that yes. stuff. I didn't do that. Cause again, it was iPod and uh, iTunes. It's huge specific. in Germany. Like you get so many requests from Germans for that feature. It's amazing. <laughs> but we are very orderly <laughs> people. We like to know what the chapter is. Like, is it a song or is it an album? I just, I got to figure that out. Yeah. Uh, you're right. It doesn't, we don't have seasons. We don't have bonus yeah. content. Uh, we don't do trailers. Yeah. So some of those features are, are less useful. But I get very nervous when I see a big company like Apple start to get in the analytics field. Uh, because that is going to hurt us. Uh, a small percentage of our stuff, this show probably is most Apple listeners, but a lot of our stuff doesn't have a lot of Apple listeners. Yep. Uh, I don't want to be reliant on any company for that kind of information. So I, I'm just, I'm, when, I, when I see stuff like this, I just get worried about to, uh, the, the business not being driven by people who want to do things that are cool and inventive and people that now want to do things that there is a proven, there are proven analytics that there are listeners for this type of show. Uh, I don't, I want podcasts to continue to be really, really weird. And I agree. If people can't, if people can't support, <laughs> and, and I, m the, m most of the podcasts out there, they're not people who are making six figures a year doing this podcast. It's people who are very, very happy that all their expensive, uh, expenses of, of production are being covered. And maybe they can go out to dinner a couple times a month too. But maybe that would go away if someone was saying, we noticed that during those 10 minutes where you talked about Wonder Woman and argued whether yeah. it, was, it was a prequel I, to the Justice yeah. League movement, a lot of people tuned out. And I, I, when you joined our podcast network, you said that you would have us as co-producers. We're telling you that we would much rather you not talk about that sort of stuff. No, that's the last thing I'd ever want to see. And it would be the kiss of death for podcasting, frankly. It would kill it. Uh, but yeah, professional broadcasters get that kind of information all the time. I remember on the screensavers, TiVo offered us a graph. You could see how when people paused yeah. and rewound <laughs> yeah. and everything, every second of the show. And that, fortunately, uh, Tech TV didn't buy that because uh, that would, that's not what you want to do, in, in my opinion. Uh, but the problem is, and and this is really inside baseball, but when advertisers see this, they go, oh, good. So we're going to have those analytics. And yeah. and big media sees it. They say, oh, good. And it can kind of hurt us. You know, makes our ad sales harder, for instance. No, we're not going to support those. And we're not going to give you those analytics. Well, no, yeah. but we want them. And so all of these things, I don't want in any way to spy on what our users are doing. If they download the show, I'm happy. Uh, it's up to you whether you listen to it, whether you pause, whether you skip Andy, whether you skip me. 
That's none of my business, and I don't. As long I don't. as you don't skip me, no. Don't, don't skip, skip Renee. I'm whatever. I'm eminently skippable. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you brought it up. I didn't. I haven't really spent a lot of time with it. I, my initial reaction is I don't like that, but we'll we'll have to see. And I bet you will probably pay attention to it because Apple's so powerful. When you do the musical theater show, Leo is just going to get to need that. Stuff. <sighs> and can do they I am add so subscriptions? On board for that show. Did they add the ability I, to subscribe as well? I, well, that, I don't believe anything has changed with that. Okay. Uh, and they, they didn't talk. Uh, some people were asking about uh, Jason Feed, too, and they have yeah. no comment on that okay. as well. Okay. Now, our picks. That's not my pick of the week. <laughs> now, our picks <laughs> of the week. <laughs> why don't you start, Renee? Go ahead. All right. So my pick of the week, uh, we mentioned it earlier, and the new iPads, now they're both identical except for the size and the bigger one doesn't get rose gold, which is another thing that's irksome to me. But uh, they both now have the, not just the fast data transfer, but they both have the fast charging option. I wish Apple would put this in the box because it would make the Pro really pro. But right now it's it's you can go buy it on your own. And once you use it, I think you're really going to find value in it because it charges the iPad Pro around twice as fast as the usual uh, oh. USB-A uh, dongle. So you do need a USB-C to lightning cable, which you can also multitask and use that with your iPhone or your iPad plugging it into your new MacBook Pro or MacBook. But then you get the 29 watt charging brick that's USB C. You plug that in and zoom, zoom. That the previous hour long ordeal, and I'm calling it an ordeal in the most privileged sense of the word, uh, ordeal goes down to just a couple <laughs> Why don't hours. they ship that with the iPad Pro? I don't I don't know. It's probably it would probably add like three bucks to the bill of goods and it destroys everybody's math and people cry. I don't I'm, I don't know the answer. I hope they do. Um, hopefully we're just a year away from it becoming standard. Maybe because uh, they're, they're obviously all in on USB C on the Mac. So let's be all in on USB C everywhere. Because uh, consistency is a user-facing feature, but you can buy it separately. It's like nineteen bucks, I think, for the power brick, or a little bit more for that. Oh, that's and, not bad. Few okay. bucks for the cable. So yeah. they could charge a lot more. All right. Yeah, and Thank it's uh, it really is fast. And again, you can use that cable to plug into a MacBook Pro or a MacBook if you have it. So you're getting more out of it than just the charging. I guess I'll be ordering that. In fact, what dongles should I get? I by the way, I, I just my review of the uh, of the, and I've only had it for a few days. It's nice to have this extra real estate, but really, if you have an iPad Pro already, you'd probably be just happy with that. And the 9.7, yeah, it's very similar. Just It's a slightly more expansive keyboard. The 12.9 got a much more significant upgrade because it didn't have any of that screen technology. Ah. And it, it didn't have uh, the ca like its cameras with the iPad Air 2 cameras, which still make me cry. Yeah, isn't that sad? Yeah. I did see somebody on the airplane with an iPad uh, 12, you know, the big one. I was like, that thing is huge. <laughs> there were a bunch on my flight, and they were playing, can like, three people with those playing Candy Crush on them yeah, on no, the airplane. I don't think I, that's, that's a good That's a use. thing. 12.9 <laughs> <laughs> inches of Candy Crush. All right, so which dongles, I got to go to the uh, store now, which dongles do you recommend? Uh, it depends uh, It depends a lot on your use case. I yeah. would get that charger uh, and the power brick. I would also get the USB uh, 3 dongle because if you ever want to plug it in, it's got a pass-through so you can charge with it. So you can plug in things like other keyboards, podcasts, mics, uh, you know, almost any USB-A device that you want to once you get that. Uh, and then if you ever want to do HDMI out, you can get an HDMI out, an HDMI dongle as well. See, it's really kind of frustrating that store.apple.com doesn't, doesn't go anywhere yeah. that I can actually yes. say. Where's the access? the redesign. You can search for USB C iPad in the corner, and that's oh, not the best. God. There, um, needs, there needs to be a top level button for here is where you go if you want to look at find a brick and mortar Apple store. Here is where you go if you want to treat this like an online store and not just go like, through product pages and, and then click a buy it here. I thing. want to give you money button. Just that I would be exactly. so helpful. Here, if I if I hold up my credit card to the camera, can <laughs> I prove that? Just you can verify that I. Do have I enough money in the I account do have to admit, for, though, for an HDMI dongle? Apple Pay is a yes. really dangerous thing because <laughs> I I was on the plane. We had the plane had just landed. I turned on my phone. Oh my god! Ordered. I did not. I had not exited the plane when I ordered the yeah. iPad Pro and just did my fingerprint. And I said that was easy. That's eight hundred bucks. I'll never see. Yeah. <laughs> it was like whoa. So that's so unfair. No matter how bad like on-plane Wi-Fi is or, or, or public Wi-Fi is, it's always just fast enough for to buy stuff. It's never fast yes. enough to be distracted from buying stuff because you're you're looking at pictures and video. Oh, wait. Thanks, so wait a minute. Now I don't know what I'm getting here. This is this is really got to work on this. Yeah. Uh, so you want the USB-C to lightning cable because that's what's going to connect okay. to the power brick. Okay. And Not then you the want two meter. The I want the one meter because yes, yes, because I'm all metric. Now what? Keep now you shopping. want the USB-C, 29-watt uh, USB-C, yeah, shop accessories, and okay. then you, you can... Oh, Lord. Uh, this is a terrible store. <laughs> yes. I mean, seriously, Cable. Apple. Chargers, uh, top left. 
But hey, if if you could flip that page around and see how well the back of that page was painted, you would be so <laughs> impressed with it. So I want I the USB C to there. USB adapter? No. Uh, no, I want no, the you want the twenty five yeah, so watt power. Twenty nine watt, yeah, that one, yes. That's fifty bucks, dude. What'd you say? Nineteen. Oh, that is fifty bucks. Sorry. Well, the cable is nineteen. The cable's twenty five. Well, twenty five. Wow. Well, you Canadians. Sorry, I'm completely. What are you getting a no, special deal now? Here. What's the <laughs> I I could swear I looked at the other day and it was nineteen bucks. Oh, no, they they mind. saw me coming. They they know. Yeah. Oh, Leo's yeah. ordering. Give it. Put an extra six bucks in here. And then, and then what about a USB card reader? They have that. They have they have a USB three card reader and a USB three to um. Uh, to uh, what's it called? There's, Lightning there's a camera USB right three there. camera adapter. Yeah. Oh, and that's and nice because it has a, a power port as well. Yes. Okay. So, but that doesn't have a card reader. You just put a regular no. card reader yeah. on there. You you can get a card reader too. They have a card. Reader I have card readers. Exact. That's fine. But this one, they this one will let you connect to a whole range of peripherals. Well, that's only a hundred twenty two dollars additional. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's expensive as, as being Phil, an Apple customer. Uh, just, 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 that's okay. Just like watch, watch the keynote. Have Phil explain to you okay. how much you would have to pay for all this if you bought things separately that's and what right. a great value this is. This is a great Phil's value. Really good at that. Thank you, Phil. So the Lightning to USB 3 camera adapter, the 29-watt USB-C power adapter, yes. and the USB-C to Lightning cable. Yes. Because I'll be plugging that into the power adapter to charge it. Yes. Or into your new MacBook Air right. or MacBook Pro. Right. Sorry, not MacBook Air. MacBook or MacBook Pro. It's getting, this is now getting closer to a PC. So again, <laughs> I, I really think that they should have that adapter in the box and that the lightning to USB-C yes. cable should do USB 3 anyway. I don't yes. understand why we have all this rigmarole. Yes. I don't even feel like I don't even feel like I've ordered the right thing. And I had Renee Ritchie looking over my shoulder <laughs> telling me what to order. And yeah, I, don't I don't know, know if I got that. the right thing. Annie Anako, your pick of the week. Uh, really cheap, really simple. You can go to Amazon or eBay and buy like 10 SIM tray extractor tools for like a buck or <laughs> three or four bucks. And here's, and here's why here's why I'm telling you that's such a great idea. That it arrives in the mail. You, again, you'll just get this envelope probably from China with these little SIM extractor tools. At that point, you take out your wallet, you put one in your wallet, yes, and then everywhere. you drop one in your laptop bag. You you put you give a couple to your wife. You give every single place where you might have we have might have a bag or an accessory that is on you at a point where you wish you had a SIM extractor have a sim extractor on you it's like it's it's not it's not quite like having a gun <laughs> every place in the in your in your your stronghold in case you're caught unawares but how many times do you actually need a sim extractor almost never but when you do there's nothing that will take the place of that tool and the reason why i carry one in my wallet is number one because that one time every year or two when i legitimately buy a new phone it is such a small item. I will never find where I put it when I put it away the last time. But if it's always in my wallet, then I know where it is. It's in my wallet because you're talking about something that weighs, I don't know what, a, a gram maybe. It's just and it's the, the it's not even metal almost. It's so thin. So it's just trivially easy to keep with you. And then you never know when you're in a, you'll be in a situation where the battery in your phone is dead but you also you, you can swap phones with somebody if you can just swap uh, sims just for just for an hour you can still get done what you need to get done by messaging people on your phone and that's the situation i was in in new york uh, a couple weeks ago where uh, i did have a battery with me that i could have just plugged it into but i was also walking around with a second phone that i was testing and i decided that well this has a fully charged like 4000 milliamp hour battery inside it i can either do a sim swap in in about a minute and not have to walk around with this pair of nunchucks in my hands at all times. <laughs> I think that's what I'll do. So, but mostly it's so that no, no matter when you need to get your hands on a sim, it will always be there with you. And the next time you legitimately need to use a sim, you will not have to worry where it is. Do it once, <laughs> put it in your wallet, forget about it. And then when you realize that, oh, you'll only remember it later on when you realize that, oh, I'm not screwed. I happen to have a sim extraction tool on me right now. End the scourge. Of bent paper clips, you can't I, I, repent them. That see, that's hysterically funny too. A paper clip a is time, a terrible thing to waste. Well, there, there was a time where I had like a a, a DVD drive that something was stuck and I needed ejected. I could not find a single paper clip anywhere <laughs> inside my house. I was going through like old boxes to say maybe somebody <laughs> done that. when they sent me maybe, when they sent me like the, the two thousand dollar the two thousand dollar laptop maybe I'm lucky and they sent me like the FedEx return thing paper clip to like a PR thing. I could not find paper clip. So maybe clip we should say 
instead of buying 10 SIM card pushers for a dollar, a dollar nine plus free shipping, buy a box of paper clips. They do more. They don't. Well, they don't, they don't fit inside the sim hole, and also I don't want oh, to be okay. jamming something too big inside there. <laughs> that's a good point. That, 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 that's a, that's a hell of a way to thank the design team at Apple for building this incredibly <laughs> gorgeous thing. Say, oh, come on! I have a I have I a sim I have a sim up. poker in on my keychain. That's how important yeah. it is. Yeah, mine stabs me in the leg all the time, but I never take it off. I have it everywhere. <laughs> that's the messy drawer. That's where that goes. <laughs> Look at that. You can get 12 Jumbo. boxes of jumbo silver paper clips, 12,000 paper clips. Now, kids, the fun thing about paper clips, because you never actually had these before, you can make chains out of them <laughs> and you can twist them into little animals. And you can, you, and you can like take a lit match and turn it into like a little bottle rocket and use that as a launcher for the little lit match bottle rocket. Next, people teach you how to make a bottle rocket out of a lit match and a little piece of tin foil. <laughs> My pick of the week is actually for uh, today. It just, this is the longest day of the year, but as you know, by the way, happy uh, summer solstice to you all. I should actually not call it summer solstice because for some of you, it's the beginning of winter. So I don't know what to call right. it. Too right. Too right. <laughs> what do we call it? June solstice. That's a good name. Uh, but there's also, John, right? An eclipse of the sun coming soon. Ooh. August 21st. John's going to go up to uh, Oregon to see it or Washington State? Washington. Because... It goes, it goes right through the middle of the United States like a Miss America sash. And uh, if you want to see it, but you can also see a total eclipse of the sun if you go to the post office today. Mm. This is really cool. It's the first time the post office has ever released a mood stamp. <laughs> when, when It's a black eclipse. It says total solar eclipse. It's a forever stamp. But when you touch it, it turns into the moon. So that's rad. That is rad. Uh, I imagine this will be a big collector's item, but you could go to a post office or you can pre-order it online. They're available today. The total uh, only in the U.S. No good in Canada. Uh, total eclipse of the sun forever stamp. It's the first mood stamp. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> the post office is getting jiggy. Uh, all right, that's it. We're done. We're out of here. Thank you so much for welcoming me back and filling me in on what I missed. Andy Anako from the Chicago Sun Times. Thanks also for filling in when I was gone. I really appreciate it. Big shoes to fill, and I didn't fill them adequately. Thank I, you for coming I, back. I neglected to leave my shoes here. I'm sorry. He did a great job. C W. Of course he did. C W O B is his website. C W O B dot com, and also Renee Ritchie from imore dot com. This show uh, lives and breathes, uh, lives and dies with you guys. And uh, thank you for taking the time every uh, Tuesday to be here, Andy and Renee. And you, our faithful, loyal listener. We do the show. If you want to watch live, you can. We stream it live just for people who have this kind of morbid interest in seeing what's going on behind the, behind the scenes. 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1800 UTC every Tuesday. You can join us in studio. We've got a nice studio audience here enjoying the summer solstice. It's like 90 degrees in Petaluma. It was 100 yesterday. Um, just email tickets at twit.tv. We'll put a chair out for you. Uh, if you can't watch it in studio or on the stream, you can't be in the chat room at irc.twit.tv. Fear not. On-demand versions of everything we do in audio and video available in traditional RSS format. You don't need to know what that means. Just subscribe in your favorite <laughs> podcast app or download it from twit.tv slash mbw. Do we have to rewrite that how to subscribe to podcasts? How podcasts work on our website? We probably do now. Send a Sazy with four five and a quarter inch floppies, <laughs> double sided, right. single density. <laughs> Chicago, Illinois, 60601. Thank no, don't sit in there. That's the Spiegel catalog. Don't <laughs> Leo will just show up and read it to himself. <laughs> just in my head. Thank you, Renee. Thank you, Andy. Thanks to all of you for Thank watching. You. Now get back to work because you know what? Break time is over.